Welcome, Magma Munchers, to the balance document stream. I promised this like a week ago now. And I'm actually joined by someone you probably recognize from my older videos and streams. It's the man himself, C. <laughs> now, he hasn't played the game in a long ass time, which I think is quite valuable because a lot of players and viewers, I'm sure a lot of you haven't been playing the game much. So to get his insight into the changes that are coming up, I think will be quite valuable. Here's the link, by the way, for anybody who wants to look at the document for themselves. And yeah, whilst we wait for just a little bit more people, yep, we'll spread misinformation whilst we wait. I'll put up a poll real quick. How are you guys doing? <clears throat> How is everyone doing? Let's get a few more people in so we can maximize the amount of laughs we get at the balance team. For people who don't know, the way the balance team works is it's just a group of people and they make this document which just acts as like a suggestion for Vtex. So Vtex just looks at it and whatever he thinks to add or whatever's the easiest to add is what he implements. So really backwards how it works, but there you go. Now you know. Right, let me pin that link by the way so anybody who joins can just see it all the time. Top 10 AO balance changes, number one, surgery work. Yep, they really they really lost a few brain cells trying to make that dumbass change. All right. You'll see the change in a second. I don't think you've actually seen Surge in-game, have you, Wedged? You have. Damn. Let me end this poll. <laughs> All right, that's good. Bro is not completely clueless. All right, I'm interested in what you think of the change then. 55% yes, 44% no, 34 votes. Mag, why do you sound like you're talking out of a tin can? One second, let me, let me just verify that. All right, you know, what? it's not as bad as the other time where it sounded like I was in a bathroom, but if, it, if the audio quality is really bad, guys, just tell me. I rearranged my sound configuration. Like I have external speakers that I have my microphone plugged into now. So audio quality might be a little bit different. Let me see if I can make it a little bit better. All right, that should be a little bit better chat. It's good for you. All right, good, 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 good. All right, let's get started with the Balance document. I can hear you. Say something real quick. Hello. Yeah, it's picking up yeah, in the OBS. Uh, I, I can't hear myself in this stream. Oh no. Oh, never mind. We chilling, we chilling. We chilling. We we cooling off the perk, guys. My bad. Alright, <laughs> let's... uh. Let's get started with the changes, shall we? I'm just going to read it out and then you're going to just have to follow along because I'm not streaming it in Discord. So, this document is a guideline written on behalf of the balance team for the explicit purpose of giving VTEX for final changes. Nothing is set in stone, although many of the proposed changes will certainly make it into the game. We will be working hard, yeah, that's a lie, to strike a balance in Arcane Odyssey's combat system that players will find fair Enjoyable and entertaining. Well, you seem to have failed on your one goal, Balance Team. If you ever have any suggestions for the game, we ask you to express them over in the Balance Feedback server. I might have to join up. To be honest, I might have to show up. <laughs> I wonder like what feedback bro is going <laughs> to give. Yeah, now we can hear him. Now we can hear him. I, I, guess, I, I guess I just had to like mute you and then unmute you again for it to finally pick up. That was weird. Yeah, that was a bit weird. We'll certainly make it in the game, Lamau. Yep. They, they, these changes definitely make it into the game. Anyways, XS slash S indicates a small change, taking only a few seconds to a few minutes. Okay. M indicates a medium change. 
L indicates a large change. I, I don't know why they're giving like Vtex rough time frames for implementation. Like only he'll know how long it takes. Red indicates a nerf. Orange indicates a neutral change. Green indicates a buff. Italicized text indicates rationale for a change. Linked changes with the link emoji must be done if done at all. Red highlight equals critical priority. Must make it into this patch. Oh man. Whenever we see red highlight widget, it, it has to make it into the game. Oh man. Oh. Has to. Vertex has to do this. Bro, ha he has man. to do it. We carefully determine the priority of each change based on its ease of implementation and the impact it will have on the meta. Critical changes are critical. Oh, they have it bold <laughs> in all caps. It's critical. <laughs> critical. Chat. It's critical. Hey, hey everybody, my name's Voice it. Critical. Hey. Welcome, welcome <laughs> to the stream chat. Today we're reviewing the 1.15 balance document. Poopy butthole balance document. <laughs> Yellow highlight, it, high priority. Perfect. I am moist critical. I'm just a side channel. Anyways, I, I can't be bothered to read like the intro. Let's let's get to the first change. Dodge right. reflex. Uh, I'll put this up as a poll chat. I'd put a W L Aiden Ross type poll. Reduce the number of reflex charges in midair from two to one. Let me put that as a poll. Tell me what you think, chat. I'll read it out and then I'll discuss it with Wedged. So this should only apply in combat. You sh should still have two reflex charges while out of combat. This chain should help dodge reflexes become more of an ability to be used carefully. This limitation should generally make it easier to hit players in combat. I don't, I don't know about that change. I think this is a stupid change. I don't think we should be, like, depending on which game state you're in, be changing what amount of dodge reflexes you can do. That's just another thing to bear in mind. And I think it'll make the game feel clunky. Like what if I clip an NPC and then all of a sudden I can only do one. It should be consistent throughout the game state. That's what I think personally. What do you think, Wedged? Uh, your point makes sense, I guess. Um, uh, in the Nimbus C, I remember them saying that uh, the current, uh, how do you explain it? The current PVP scenario is like very high level. It's like, even yeah. though you're at level 125, the current speed and power that people are moving at is of much of a, is something that should only be acquired at a higher level. So maybe reducing the dodge reflex is better because they might. I don't know. I haven't read this. Yeah, uh, I get what you mean, but I think that's uh, more indicative uh, of the current stats. Oh, um, just to yeah, yeah, break your train of thought. They also said that we're going to get more dodge reflexes. So what? When we get like four dodge reflexes, are we only going to get two whilst in combat? Just keep it consistent throughout, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, what maybe... you Yeah, uh, go on. Maybe they'll give you like more dodge reflexes the higher level you are. I guess that makes sense. It gives more of a barrier between higher level and lower level players. Makes you want to level up more, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, really. of course. Uh, I just think the issue right now is we, like, take attack speed, for example, or any stat, we can get, like, 500 attack speed. We can get a crap ton of agility, right? So yeah. we're not meant to have that high amount of agility, which is where they're turning down the formulas. So that that's an issue with the substats, not dodge reflex. It yeah. also says here, this change should help dodge reflexes become more of an ability to be used carefully. This limitation should generally make it easier to hit players in combat. So I, I get the thought process to make it easier for people to land shots. But this mostly feels like it's targeting high agility users. I personally don't see an issue with dodge reflex. It was a change that, you know, people had to account for in PvP. But once you get used to it, it's all right. And it's not something we should be changing in the sense where in combat, you can only use a less amount than normal. I think that's stupid. Honestly, I think it would make it a bit more like brain dead, if that makes sense. Because you'll not be able to, you won't be able to move around people with a huge yeah, attack movement. range. It's not a good And that's already a problem ever. even with the current dodge reflex, right? Exactly. Exactly. It's just high agility that needs to be targeted, not the dodge reflexes themselves. The chat yeah. says mostly in favor of this being an L change. 71% L. So yeah, I think 
I think the people have spoken. This I, this change just sounds stupid right off the bat. I, I would just this is apparently this a change. critical change that needs to be done. Oh yeah, it's it's highlighted <laughs> in red. It's a critical change. <laughs> it's a critical change. Oh, oh no. leave it. Oh, Imagine that's... it just doesn't go through. That would just mean like critical <laughs> changes a, that means that's nothing. That's a text thing, for real, man. Oh my god. Mag, I just wanted to say you said that this game had a tiny amount of skill expression and now the reflex change will make it even worse. Exactly. All this does is make attack size even more favorable. Like Wajid said, it's problematic, these hitboxes. So if you can't yeah. dodge around, you're just forced to take damage. Mag, we won't be one. You can see boxing. Lord, I really want to avoid playing this game. It's so boring. I have other games that are more fun. We running away from PvPers with this one? I don't think you can because once you're in combat, or you clip an NPC, that's it. No more dodge reflex. <laughs> no Running more is going to be so much harder. It makes if people you're gonna die immediately. <laughs> yeah, you get fly sword, one dodge reflex. I mean, oh, if they're going to implement a fly swatting mechanic that just be that only benefits some people, then at least tone down the attack size as well. Yeah, exactly. Just tune down all the other stats. Yeah, just hopefully that actually all. appears in the uh, document later on. Yeah, we'll we see. still got like 2 out of 27, so... Anyways, let's skim through the rest. Dodge reflex momentum reduced by 20%. The teleport distance itself should not be reduced, only the momentum you are carried after the teleport. See, that's a fair change. That's why I was bringing up the whole agility thing, because with a lot of agility, you can carry a lot of momentum and cover a lot of ground. So it becomes mobility and not a dodge reflex, you know, a dodge... So this is a this is a good change, I think. Yep, uh, I think the same. I'm just going to skim through these. That's not like a big change. Burst, Ekrix, Exopolis barriers, momentum after reflex is done carrying should be reduced. That's a fair change. Yep. High agility people are what need to be targeted. Can't, I ain't reading all of that. What is this, like a dream <laughs> response? I ain't reading all of that. The hell? Adjust the attack speed formula, general efficiency 80 to 100%, increased diminishing return. See, that's a fair change. Right now, I had 400 attack speed in my magma. Conjurer was just chewing at the speed of light. That needs to be toned down. There's no way we should have that amount of stat efficiency at this lower level. Yeah. Change the efficiencies of the elements that attack speed affects. So, uh, note, speed affinity should maintain their current efficiencies if at all possible. Project our speed 100%. Start up 100% to 60%. Weapon reload time 100% to 60%. Interval delay. Time between hits for multi attacks 100% to 60%. End lag 25% to 30%. Uh, I guess. I, I guess this makes attack speed sound more in line with what it's meant to be like increased projectile speed. Yeah, because yeah, right now it reduced startup time and a whole lot of other things that didn't sound like what a tech speed would do. But let me put this up as a poll. What do you think, Wedged? Um, uh, how do I explain this? End lag it was like something that you could reduce using the agility, right? Using a tech speed, yeah. Use, uh, my bad. Yeah, using a tech speed. The fact that end lag, what is it saying? It's saying that it's going to increase, and the actual weapon speed also increases. I think that's better. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to explain it. <laughs> well, this is why you're not part of the balance stock, man. Yeah, damn. <laughs> no, nah, just kidding. Uh, I don't know who the balance. Does anybody know who the hell like the balance team is? Like, these are some unknown, irrelevant-ass people, I swear. As a speed user, this makes me happy and sad. I got 202 speed, zero size. See, bro, bro is a chad for that. Bro is a chad for the zero size. Why didn't they buff Ash? We'll get to that. This is a good change. Speed abusers get really annoying to punish. Yeah, it got to a point where high attack speed almost became agility. High attack speed berserkers could use their abilities as agility. Use the crash move, you get sent because you have so much momentum. Oh yeah, I remember that. Also, yeah, you remember it with the dagger, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you were able to throw it from like 
uh, the navy air is to. Uh, oh, the no, navy you want to use the yeah. spiraling fury move. Remember, oh, fire me now, just yeah, yeah, fly yeah. up into the sky. You, or, yeah, it would launch you. I think the key issue this is targeting is the only form of skill expression in this game is if you can punish people in end lag. And obviously, attack speed was so good because you reduce how much end lag you had, which is why it was so annoying at high amounts. Because you could be facing some Vindicator user who just didn't have end lag, which is <laughs> stupid, right? So I say this is a really good change, healthy change. It allows more people to be able to profit off that end lag, especially exactly. for people that lag while playing the game. Exactly. So healthy change. Chat also agrees 77% W. Yeah. Select torches, one in the balance team. Uh, as well, select torches everywhere, to be honest. He's like incorporated into the team. So expected. Yeah. Let's see the Honestly, explanation. I don't, think, I don't think select torch would condone any of these really bad changes, if that makes sense. The good ones, yeah. The bad ones, no. Yeah, I don't know what he would condone. I haven't he, met he, the guy, don't know his thoughts. But I would hope so. Seem, he seems like a chill guy. Attack speed has exponential behavior on startup, creating the issue of essentially negating the speed of speed penalty of attacks with long startups. Yep. These changes will substantially reduce the attack speed's effectiveness on startup. Yep, that's good. Attack speed's main focus will be on its effect on projectile speed. Yep, that is really nice. good change. Well done, balance team. That is actually really good. All right, on to the next one. Strength. Common techniques should receive minus 30 strength level requirements. This change does not intend to make hybrid fighting style builds share the same tiers as berserkers, but rather make all fighting style builds be on par with the respective magic tier scaling. Hybrids will remain the same in proportion to berserker tiers with this change. Example, a 130 strength berserker warlock is essentially, essentially the same as a 100 magic mage warlock with respective tiers, which makes no sense considering that the fighting style build had no invest had to invest more strength. The 100 magic mage or even slightly lower, you know, bro, I can't be bothered to read this. I, I can't be bothered. I I think this is an all right change, to be honest. Like this, yeah. I'm not going to sit here trying to theorize like the meta, meta defining aspect of this change. Like who cares? As long as you can use leap as a berserker, it made no sense not being able to use leap. Whereas you could use magic leap. As long as you can, that's fine. Yeah, so to kind of boil it down, uh, make it so that a level 100 Berserker can fight a level 100 Mage on equal round. Exactly. So fair change, I, I don't, I can't bother to stick around on that. Ensure that whatever techniques ultimate art embodiments that are unlockable are properly implemented and balanced according with this change. Focus and air step requirements swapped. Air step is now 120, focus is now 150. I think that's a fair change. Resistance. Resistance, that see that makes, makes it more so in line. much more sense. That is yeah. way more in line with Mage, exactly. Leap being higher than focus was stupid as hell. <laughs> Alright, detailed really explanation. Odd bodice change. Generally from a game design perspective, it simply makes sense for strength builds to begin with their first technique, as how mage starts with their first magic. Crash is a fundamental skill that allows a melee class to approach the target of an attack. Similarly, Tower Blast is fundamental for magic classes to get in range. The cone check and damage reduction for non-melee builds prevent abuse. Players won't be likely to get used to using Crash's mobility before awakening into a non-melee. You know, that sounds like yap, to be honest. Don't care. Look at this. This is such yap. I ain't reading all of that. <laughs> but if I was Vtex, I ain't reading all of this crap. The hell? I think Vtex would be required to read all of this, I'm going to lie. Oh, bro, it just and like and then proceed drag. not to make any changes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Bro's like a university professor reading essays. Like, I ain't reading all of that. But I gotta. Alright, on to the next change. Stun slash knockback. KO should no longer stun the victim. KO should instead just stop the victim's movement at the location of impact, acting purely as a positional advantage over your target for an easier follow up. KO should be instantly cancelable by doing any action. Finally. Holy crap. That actually makes so much more sense. 
Let me I remember pool. like getting knocked out and then I get flung across the map. Like it was kind of weird, man. but it also uh, like if you got like KO'd into the ground, you'd get stuck on like some really really tall like <laughs> foliage. Yeah, and on like the other person's screen, you're just sitting somehow. in the air. <laughs> <laughs> you just somehow summon this block to appear. The so instead of having that, having it so that people actually just stop in place and it's easily cancelable, I think that's a good change. Exactly. You know, if you get like KO'd, so you get put into that brick, and then you try and move around, you just do not move away from it unless you shift, like dodge out of it. That was so stupid. Thank God they're finally addressing that. So AIDS makes getting stunned a little bit more consistent as you can now easily yeah. get out of it. Doesn't make it you so won't harsh. get thrown off a lot anymore by knockouts. Yeah. Alright, ending the poll, let's see what chat says. Most are in favor of, favor of it being a W change. Sounds good. Alright, next change. Change the behavior of stun statuses from hard CC to soft CCs. So instead of it being a stun, it now just applies slowness and agility nullification. Hmm, this is a bit of a controversial change. What do you think mm, of that? I actually, once I put up the poll, I don't mind this, because right now you know petrified stun it barely lasts <laughs> at all. So increasing the duration, but making it so that instead of being just locked in place, making it so that you can move very slowly. I think that's better. You know what? Because uh, you'll actually be able to see the effects yeah. of it a lot more. I think. I think the key takeaway is. M most people just dislike stuns, like when you can't play the game. That's that's really unenjoyable. So, I, what I'm trying to say is, I want to see how this change plays out. You know, I have to see what exactly happens once players get used to this change to see if it's actually worthwhile because. I'm fine with stunts, but I'm also fine with this change, you know? Yeah. I was under the opinion that stunts should be part of the game, but really limited in what they can do. But this is also a good approach, because most people dislike that. So I'm, I want to see how this plays out. I'm just easing in the middle right now. I can't really say until I actually get proof of what happens with this change. Yeah, it makes sense. It's one of those things that you have to see before you judge. And what it does is, the, the key point of a stun was to combo off of it, but people were just using it to constantly throw you off. That's why Warlock is so problematic, Ice Warlock, Lightning Warlock. Yeah. So this makes it so you have to combo to actually profit off of it. I'm, I'm just hoping they take away the stun synergies, because there's no reason for you to stun and get a damage bonus. It should be a stun into combo to get that damage off. So let's see later on in the dock if that happens. Let me end the poll and see what chat thinks. I hate Warlocks for real. All right. Seplock will be even stronger with new stuns since Lightning. Oh, uh, uh, look at the next point. Look at the sucks. next point. Stun slow synergy should no longer have a damage synergy upon successful application. You know, Balance Dock, you might have cooked. It. Balance Dock actually cooked. This is the change I was waiting for. Thank you, Balance Dock. The team is competent. Well done, boys. 71% in favor of the hard control to soft CC. Yeah, we just need to see how it plays out. You either make that change or you remove the stun synergies. So well done, balance team. You did both. Is using potions in PvP scummy? I really hate when people use them. Yeah, it's, it's boring. Quite disappointing when people use it, especially in hunts. But it's part of the game, so. In a 1v1, just agree to not use potions. I can't even remember the last time Paralyze worked. Me neither, man. Last time, it just made me stand up. Like, wow. I'm paralyzed, <laughs> and I just stood up. Good stun. Bro, bro, bro is up. Oh, I'm up. I'm up, even though I'm meant to be down. Affected synergies, ice on soak, snowy, snow on soak, freezing, wind on freezing, snowy, lightning on soak, blah, 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 or the CC. These CC synergies already have a significant primary effect of inhibiting the victim's movement. The, what, why are they using the word inhibiting, bro? Like, who are these guys? Some, like, English professors? 
Just say stun, bruh. Using some fancy ass word. Making it much easier to follow up, so they should not need a damage synergy on proc as well, even if they clear the catalyst dice. You know, well done, balance team, for making a common sense change. Well done, boys. <laughs> that seems like a compliment, but I don't know. I don't. 69% anyway. in favor of this change. Yeah, you know, well done, balance stock. Knockback should only occur if and only if damage is dealt rather than if the attack visually hits the victim on their own client. That's a that's a fair change. That just makes yeah. the game more consistent. Do you know what it's referencing? You know if I'm no. like on the cusp of your Vindicator attack and I get knocked back but I don't take damage. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I know exactly so what, what you're doing now. Makes so sense. it just makes the game consistent. There's actual GIFs that you can look at to see how it's going to be implemented, I guess. Let's see where it takes me. Yeah, so... It's not like an IP grabber. <laughs> Man's team is taking my IP. Oh no, I should I should be on my best behavior with what I say to them. What about this one? Bro, bro's in the pot. Bro's being cooked alive. But yeah, you, you get the point, right? Yep. If an attack lands, you should take damage, not just take knockback. So, fair change. Nothing else to say. Add a damage threshold. Alright, I'll come back to this one. Add a damage threshold to apply stun slash knockback. Only moves designed around knockback should bypass this uppercut and surge. I think that's a fair change. I mean, either do this. Well, in fact, this does make it so. The strength of the knockback is in proportion to the amount of damage you deal. So if you deal with no little to no damage, you shouldn't apply knockback, right? That's all this yeah. is doing. So fair change. I think it also makes it so that if you're like more of a spammy rather than damage type mage, or any class to be honest, then you can't just spam stun and slow people forever. You have to do an exact like amount of damage to be yeah. able to stun or not. That's good. That's actually pretty good. Fair change. Fixed momentum not properly being lost when using an ability which causes knockback to be altered significantly when hitting while casting an ability. Example, copy and paste into Discord chat. I, I ain't doing that, bruh. Let me do it for you then. Don't really care about this change. Let's just move on. There's bigger changes to look at. Fighting style slash magic. All energy costs should be set should be a set percentage and not scale with tiers or levels. The pivot for this change should be the cost of an ability when used by a pure max level build. That's a that's definitely a fair change. I put up as a poll even though there's no point. I think we can all agree this is a fair change. It's another game it's another change that makes the game more consistent. Did you check it out, Wedge? Did you paste it? Uh, yeah, it's just a video of a like fight scene and the right. actual thing happening. Bro, moment. Who was the other person talking? It's C. He appeared in a lot of my older videos, so you still one view on him a lot. He just doesn't play the game much anymore. Yeah. Do you have a Warlock PvP guide? I do not. Yeah, so all this change is doing is... So, for example, Savants had a higher energy cost than mages, which was really stupid. So just making it consistent. You can go between classes and it has the same amount of energy cost. You don't need a Warlock PvP guy. Warlock is OP. Exactly. Exactly. All right, let's move on to the next change. Most of the chat agrees that it's all right. Okay, reduce the size scaling with tiers, not base tier size for all abilities, minus 20%. Alright, that's fine. As long as we make size smaller. This is... Changes like this are also just primarily affecting the end game. We need to tone everything down. Now that we're gonna... gonna uh, okay, I guess I'm drunk. Now that we're gonna get even higher level cap. So we need to tone everything down proportionally. Yep, makes sense. Increase the base to size of the following abilities. Javelin and Beast Instinct. What does the tier mean? 
What does tear refer yeah, to? What does tear refer to? I think it means like when you're there's different tiers to mages, right? The way it works is when, oh. if you're a pure pure mage, you get a bigger ability. That's why second magic on mage is really small because you don't have enough magic invested for it to be big. Oh, so okay. it's just increasing that, making the smaller variant about bigger. The, uh, like if you're a novice mage or if you're like a grand mage or something, you know those titles that you get when yeah. you level up? Yeah. I think it's talking about that. Fair change, I guess. Like, I, I can't be bothered to analyze the semantics of this change on the meta. Whatever, let's just move on. Hybrids. Reduce the magic strength tier scaling of all magic strength hybrid builds, excluding savants, plus 10% tier requirements. Hybrids will receive standardized energy costs, maintaining their stat and synergies from imbues, and will have decent size skills by default of other changes, so they do not need to be as close to pure builds in their tiers. That's a fair change. Honestly, yep. anything to make it so knight isn't a better warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weapon I hybrids. I quite sad about that. <laughs> really, really stupid. Reduce the weapon tier scaling of all weapon hybrid builds, excluding Savant. Yep, that's just in line with the previous change. Savant build stat cap increase from 40% to 50%. 40% is too restrictive and locks Savant away from basic yet important abilities for a long time. A 50% cap would give them much more room to work with early on. I guess that's needed. Because right now, Savant has access to nothing. Like, we're not too far into the game for there to be enough stat points to invest to actually make a good Savant build. Unless you're some gimmick build. So that's a fair change. Yep. Increases spell technique tier scaling, don't care. Contra Warlock. Slow magic imbuement should have their speed affected at 50% efficiency. Currently, 100% efficiency on imbues below 1.0 speed, meaning missile imbued attacks are 45% slower. This change should not affect imbues with speeds of 1.0 or higher, as they already work at 50% efficiency. Are 45% slower? Really? Does that, does that mean that attack speed is less effective on slower magics? Is that what that's saying, chat? Why is it not just sounds, consistent? Sounds like it. Why is it not just consistent throughout? I'll get back to you, chat. There's a little bit of stream delay because I'm streaming in 440p. So I'll just read the next Honestly, change to get back. I think it makes it so that uh, imbuements for different magic types are more like consistent or like they're closer to a average point, right? So yeah. There isn't a huge range in speed, depending on what imbuements you have. I guess it makes it more balanced by making it similar, or more similar to a medium speed than before. Chat says, it means attack speed is more effective, it makes slow magics faster on imbuement. Yeah, so instead of 45% slower, it would be 50% efficient, so half of 45 I guess. All right, that's a fair change then. Uh, the only thing I hate about slow magic imbuement is it cuts off your beam. Like slow magics with attack speed cut off how far the beam goes by a lot, yeah, which is really oh. annoying. Like those affinities suck. Maybe well, that will be mentioned later on. I think this in addition to turning down the attack speed formula could be a fair chat. It does make the magics a little bit more consistent or average out like you said. Yeah. Iron Leg, Cannon Fist, Warlocks, Imbued Attacks that would otherwise apply Bleed 2 should instead, instead stack the Bleeding status. So Double Bleed. I guess that's a fair change. Tier 2 Bleed, I don't even know what that crap did. Anyways, going back up because I missed this one. Fixed Imbued Attacks, Stacking Bleed or Applying Bleed 2 for Imbues not meant to. Well, RIP. I wonder if this means the Atlantean Greatsword will still stack bleed. Maybe this change will fix that. I guess it just makes it more consistent. Imbues, meant to bleed stack, glass, metal, wood, iron leg, cannon, fist. Yeah, I think this is definitely a positive change. Glass should definitely yeah. 
stack bleed. That's the whole point of glass. Exactly. It might make a glass uh, imbued conjurer a lot better to use. Yep, other than just being gimmicky fire right now. Yeah. Atlantean Greysword stacks bleed on purpose, that's his special ability. Yep, that's exactly what I'm thinking, so hopefully this change doesn't affect that. Speed up equip time, or ideally remove equip delay entirely, plus 100%, should absolutely not prevent skill usage during weapon swapping, as it needlessly is inconsistent with every other path, as well as inhibitive to fluidity with skill usage. I think that's a really fair change. I, it's so... It's such a pain in the ass when you finally stun someone as warrior, which is so rare to do, and then you try swap weapons, but it doesn't swap in time, so you can't get a musket shot off or any other ability off. It's so annoying. It limits the potential of warrior so much. Yeah. That's pretty good. Especially because you won't be able to profit off whatever stun exactly. that you apply. Like with Berserker. Now that you will, you'll be able exactly. to speed with mages, it's for example. more in line with mage and... Well, magic and firing style. Firing style users could stun you, slam you into the floor, and then instantly follow up with a crash move or whatever. Warriors exactly. had to swap, meaning there was times where you just lose a free hit off. Made made it really inconsistent. And the disparity between the two's potential was really huge. So this is a good change without a doubt. Split attack speed affinity on all weapons into casting speed and projectile speed. Casting speed effects start up. Delay interval for multi-attacks, twin crescents and end lag. Projectile speed affects the range of projectiles and ranged abilities. Ranged weapons do not need projectile speed affinity as the range multiplier stat already serves this purpose. Uh, I guess that just makes it easier for VDEX to fine-tune things as you can now tune each thing individually instead of having to affect one, which affects both. Corresponding enchantment changes. Swift. Sir, I don't care, to be honest. Change the stat affinities of various weapons. Okay, change the weapon damage formula and every weapon skill damage affinity allows for weapon damage standardization and easier balancing of individual weapon skills. Permanently oh fixes God. many progression-related issues relating to weapon damage, such as bow dealing 70 damage at level 10. Uh, I'd say... If you want to link the change the stat affinities of various weapons in the Discord, because it's a whole nother uh, document for each individual weapon. All right, let's let's give it a. I look. don't think you have time for that. Oh boy! <laughs> you know, what? if I can be bothered, I will check this out at the end. Otherwise, right now I'm gonna skip that. I ain't reading all of that. Fixed attack size, size affinity, scaling, uncertain skills, certain skills. It currently increases visual knockback range disproportionately from the actual damage hitbox. Alright, that's a fair change. Uh, any change that makes the game more consistent, I'm all for. So, I want the hitbox to be in line with the visual effects. There's no way I want to get hit by an explosion mage where I'm not getting hit by the visual effect, but I'm still taking damage. That is yeah. so rage inducing, so. Well done. Fix rubble not registering damage consistently. That's fair. I ain't reading all of that. Fix various issues with vitality and its formula. See tester forum. Vitality damage reduction should also affect power stat scaling rather than only base damage. Re thank well done, balance doc. Well done, balance team. Please just, just take away knight. Take away knight's power over warrior, please. Fair change. Thank you. Let's go. The old stat formula scale should... The old stat formula scale should dynamically having the levels variable update based on your current character level every 10 levels rather than be fixed to the current level cap. One sec. Let me, let me reread that. Why do I feel like I had a brain aneurysm reading that? The old stat formula scale should dynamically having the level variable update based on your current character level every 10 levels rather than be fixed to the current level cap uh i, uh, I guess whatever that means well done balance i, I think they were supposed to like add a word often dynamically but forgot to yeah just having a brain aneurysm trying to piece this one <laughs> together 
Well, whatever it is, well done, balance team. Dual stats should scale with the level of the equipment on which it is socketed in, rather than always giving stats scaled for the level cap. I don't Example, know about that one, ain't gonna lie. A perfect dual socketed onto a level 80 equipment piece would have 2,000 stats compared to if it was socketed onto a level 120 equipment piece. I think this is just that, a really pointless change. That is a pointless change. It doesn't make sense at all. Like, if you have a really good gem, you should be able to get all of the power from that gem, not based on, like, your level or the equipment's level. Yeah, I think that should it should be separate. Exactly, To be yeah. honest, I don't know why. I don't know why. That's just a pointless change. A fixed bonuses would not have their scaling change to preserve their niches and consistency. The stats that unsocket to jewels display should be based on your current level of pop. This is just a really pointless change. There's no need to come at jewels like this. Like, I guess <laughs> you're, you're only going to use jewels at max level anyways. Unless you're just, you know, crafting the jewels and just socketing it. But even then, I, I rarely do that whilst leveling up a slot. It's just easier to level up a slot with crappy armor and then just max it out at the end. This is just a stupid ass change, man. Just get For rid real. of this. The, I think the only uh, people that it's targeting this change are the people who are like at max level who want to make fun builds that are really low leveled but else, but are somehow overpowered. Do you get me? Yeah. So for exactly. example, if you get like level one starter armor and just insert the most powerful gems, that's going to be like a fun video idea. It just stops that. Yeah, it's. I guess it's just targeting when the level cap gets higher. Like I, I guess yeah. right now, 125 is the cap. In the future, it'll be 250. So what? Uh, 125 players. I uh, I get I understand the point of this change, but too early to make this change. It's just really yeah. pointless right now. When the level it, cap disparity is at that point, then maybe. Yeah, it just targets fun over continuity, which I don't think is exactly. good. Exactly, real pointless. Okay, on to the magics. Uh, I don't like the sign of this change. Ice obsidian platforms created on water should no longer count as solid ground for charges. This change should prevent recharging air movement, dodge reflexes, or leap type abilities when stepping on them, but you should still be able to use the ground to... You should still be able to use ground dodge or T-jump off of them. The issue of these platforms being used to escape via water easily while a ship was exacerbated... Oh boy, another big word, exacerbated by the debut of reflexes. Therefore, in tandem with code check, this change aims to remove almost all... Bro, the, the grammar, the words used is just hilarious. In tandem, <laughs> exacerbated. Bro, the average like age of this player base is like three, man. Just use normal everyday <laughs> language. What the hell? Let me put that up as a poll. I think this is a stupid ass change. That was a fun gimmick. Being able to make platforms you could stand on. The hell? Actually, I think this might be a good change. Because I, I know um, when I used to play the game, there were some people who would like try to like camp the, the islands for fame, for example. And if they got low, they would just go out at sea, wait to recharge and gain health, and then come back. True. It was kind of annoying. Actually. It also gets rid of the effect that you can escape without using a ship, which is half of the game basically what's yeah, the point of having of ships thought. in the game if you're not going to use them right it was really fun uh you could use your obsidian platforms ice platforms and just at full sprint go between islands and just jump between the newly created obsidian ice platforms that was so fun but i yeah. I, I personally i like this is a gimmick to those magics that i think should not be affected but i get why they're changing it there's probably one of the testers probably got into like a really stupid scenario like that where some dudes on an island just explained, yeah. yep and then was like oh no this is stupid let's nerf it which is why this made it it's also Honestly, not highlighted I, I can, so I can that, feel that. that's probably I feel why that. i feel the pain but it's a it's a cute gimmick yeah. that should be kept in my opinion it was just so fun making your own platforms to be honest just magics need more gimmicks like being able to make platforms I mean, also, I think, technically, you'll still be able to make your own platforms, right? You just won't be able yeah, to recharge or gain recharge. health on them. So I guess it's fine. If you have, like, a loss of stamina, then it, it then you'll still be able to have as it. much fun. Really? Hmm. Whole, I whole guess we're just on different sides for this. Yeah, damn, we're, we're on different ends <laughs> of the spectrum. 
think we're gonna have to one v one, bro. <laughs> just <laughs> who, clearly, whoever just beats the other person to a pulp is right. Clearly, that, that's IRL that sigma only, mindset. Though. IRL only. <laughs> sigma mindset, right there. Not playing the game, bro. <laughs> of course, man. Well, the viewers are also split. I, I think it's a pointless change, but I see why it's being made. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, Earth bleed synergy from 15% to 10%. That's a fair change. Uh, Earth had a really good bleed synergy. Ice damage is increased and bleed synergy being increased. I I don't know why they're changing mm. ice. This is a this That's is such a, a power weird. creep change. Yeah. This is how games get power crept. Especially because of the the warlock tier list video that you made recently. Like ice is already like really high tier. I guess increasing the damage and making the bleed synergy high is kinda The Bleed Synergy weird. I guess is gonna try make people run Iron Leg in the case of Warlock. I I I'd just nerf it. To be honest, I would not buff anything. Like there's no need to buff lightning's damage from 0.875 to 0.9. That's how you power creep the game. In the future, yeah. we're gonna get access to more power stat. We don't, we don't, that's gonna balance out the damage for higher levels. We don't need to increase the multipliers and synergies. This is how games get power crept. Yeah. Size, sand size is being decreased. It's sandy stats duration is increased. Uh, quite pointless. Like, I, what is the balance doc trying to balance by increasing the sandy status effect duration? What what are you balancing here? Like, what situation does this apply to exactly? What's the thought process? They're just like taking these changes out of their ass, man. They like roll the dice, like, all right, which magic sand? All right, what should we target of sand? Oh, it's status effect duration. Like, what? What's the point of that? Crystal's bleed synergy increased from 5 to 10. That's really stupid. You're, you're just turning crystal into earth. <laughs> like, literally, crystal <laughs> is going to be earth. Just with a little bit more flexible multipliers. What's the point of that change? Poison's bleed synergy yeah. is going down from 15 to 10. Fair change. That doesn't make sense, I don't think. I Because, like, it's poison, right? It's supposed to do more against bleeding enemies i mean right now these changes are pointless i'm just thinking of it in terms of future proofing so the overall power of magic should be toned down as we get access to more power but yeah right now if we weren't going into the nimbus seed this is another pointless change plasma plasma is getting a damage increase i think this is the only time i'm actually okay with an increase like this because plasma is so crap <laughs> like yeah I'm sorry to all the... In fact, I'm not even sorry. I'm not sorry, chat. I'm not sorry. Plasma is just a trash magic. It's so trash. Fire, but worse. It needs It needs this. Change all positive non-clear synergies with the Scorch status effect to 17.5%. Kind of a nitpick, but I, I like it when the numbers are increments of 10 or 5, not increments of 2.5. That just sounds off. Like, just make it a flat 20% or 15% or 10%. Just a nitpick from me. Fair change. This is the only time I'd make an exception for a multiplier being increased. Increase instead amount of should no longer it... decrease. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, instead of having it uh, as just a gimmicky magic to create the Aurora Borealis, make it somewhat in like in line with the other magics in terms of damage. Yeah, exactly. Plasma suffers from being a magic variant. Why, why the hell does my page look like this? It's because I have Opera Dark Mode. All right, don't, don't mind the inverted magic icons, chat. Is it just me? But when you look at the magics, it, it's so clear that so many magics are just reskins of others, right? Like, look at Fire and Plasma. That They're the exact same. They just have different visuals. The only difference is the multipliers and how long the status effect lasts. So Plasma just suffers from... just from that. From Ditto Syndrome. It just suffers from trying to make a different magic from existing magics. It's just, it just sucks. 
Yeah. Anyways, increased amount should no longer decrease the size of the spell. Multi blasts are quite difficult to land in their current state without extreme attack speed. Their damage will play isn't very high, and there are many things making them difficult to utilize. Yeah, I guess that's a fair change, but I, I can't wait for like 50 billion earth fists to come Actually, barreling yeah. at the size of me, all that like huge attack size. Imagine you're just walking around, you just see someone pull out the earth mage. Just a bunch of fists coming at you like Goma Goma knows uh, Gear 3. Yeah, something <laughs> or something like that. Like, it should decrease the size a tiny bit, not just not completely change the size, you know? Yeah, you know, whatever. We'll see how that plays out. It'll be quite funny, though, to see that change. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to change <laughs> how many people use, like, 20 Blast or 20 Beam. But when they do use it, it'll be hilarious. I feel like it would, honestly. More people are going to go for a lot more uh, projectiles. <laughs> you know what would be cool? Just to have, like, a, a sky of raining fists. Imagine, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so there's, like, a sky of giant raining fists or, like, spheres or sharks or, like, eagles, whatever the dumbass shapes are. Imagine if you could change <laughs> and set multiple, like, different shapes when you have multiple, when you have a set to more than one. So you could have, like, a sphere, oh. earth, eagle... And they all come out in like that sequence. That would be so hilarious. You just you just get barraged by a bunch of different animal <laughs> shapes, like magic projectiles. Exactly. You'd be like, what the heck is going on, man? Why why is there like a shark? Oh no, there's an eagle. Why is there like a giant fist? I'm getting bro fisted. And then you get like finished off by a giant Minecraft block. <laughs> Alright. Ultimate art. Damage multiply increased. <laughs> Really, the reward for landing oh, the ultimate no. could be greater for it being a projectile with travel time. This this only affects blast, by the way. Okay. I, and, you know, to be honest, I guess I'm fine with this change. Literally, nobody uses ultimate art blast. Literally, no one. Everyone uses ultimate art explosion. So you know, what? maybe we just might see somebody use this in actual PvP. Yeah. Startup multiplier is used. aim and gives you more Fair. damage. Exactly. Yes. So, you know what? Fair change. Shapes X slash projectile size decrease. Well, well done, balance doc. Well done. Well bro, done. bro, actually clapping. Damn. You don't understand. The amount of shadow mages who have it set to X slash, it's, it's, it's actually kind of amazing. Like, every Shadow Mage just unanimously agrees to use X-Flash and be the most cringe mage in existence. So, you know what? I'm pretty like sure someone edgy. told me... Someone told me that the balance team is just filled with Shadow users. So, you know what? Well done. Well done, balance team. You actually friendly fired yourself and made a decent change. Well done. They got tired of their own... Uh, shit. Exactly. Well done, balance change. I once fought Wind Mage that uses 106 size, 100% X slash, so cancer, he ran so hard. Typical, honestly. <laughs> so cringe. Explosion, increased duration should no longer decrease the size of the spell. Size reduction or duration may no longer be necessary with the various other changes done to size and size stacking. Uh, you know what? Whatever. Whatever. That just decreases the end lag and explosion. That, that would be bad, would Increased duration should no longer decrease. Oh, wait, that's to do with size. Oh, okay. Uh, I, well, I guess now if somebody has explosion set to 5, we're going to still get ass blasted from the same distance regardless. So, you know what? I can't wait for Mage to become even more branded. Mm. I, if I you manage to get out of it fast enough, then you could technically profit off of the amount of time that they're like in place now that i think about it now that i'm actually analyzing it the the whole trade-off with having more duration was you had a lower damage per explosion but it totaled to a higher amount right yeah so that's the whole premise so using that premise do we think size should also be decreased in alongside in accordance with that i'm unsure i will see how this plays out not many yep. people use explosion set to multiple. We'll see how that plays out. Leap air step start up minus 20% compensates for mage upcoming attack speed changes and makes the abilities generally more responsive for all builds. That's fair. 
leap air step should just be instant. Actually, yeah, that's pretty good. Should no longer affect fighting style meters. Currently does a 50% efficiency. No longer would trigger heat grace period or heat gain. Promoted a passive playstyle, which goes against the entire point of Thermo Fist, which is... Uh, you know what? I, I think this is a pointless change. I think this is a pointless change. Like, yeah, it would promote a passive playstyle, but not that much, right? It doesn't... You know, Nobody's going to be just spamming leap to maintain their heat. Exactly, yeah. Or to gain heat. I think it's an ability used, like, like when you think about it, like the action your character is doing, they are channeling some type of heat to get their air step. So from like a technical gameplay perspective, I, I don't think it should reduce heat. Uh, Sailor style no longer would drain seawater energy on leap. That That has been long overdue. That is that long is overdue. Leap should have not drained it. Base range increase on beam 10%. Beam should generally have more range than shot, regardless of speed affinity due to them having less damage. Or otherwise, greater startup or cast times, amount 2+, plus, and the fact that beams are magic spell and thus be effective for zoning. I, I This is another pointless change, to be honest. Beams are client side, so anybody who can aim is just going to spam beams now at uh, increased range. Damn. Speed affinity yeah. should affect beams range at 25% efficiency. Currently 50% efficiency brings it parity, brings its parity with attack speeds, influence on beams, makes slow beams generally more viable as they have range compared to the shot technique currently. Fair change, I guess. Yeah. Clash box duration reduced by 30%. For being a hit scan, extremely fast projectile, the clash box duration should be quite short. Yep. Definitely fine with that. What does clash box duration refer to? I'm confused on when that. When you use an attack, like let's say Vindicator use the ground slam move, you get like that blue aura around you, and then a, there's a yeah. clash box. So any attack that hits that aura, that clash box, it will clash. Uh, of yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I remember yep. like using that and then like three seconds later you'd throw a dagger and by the time it hits it still gets uh like clashed, yeah. I don't know. Clashed, yeah. So beam beam that should really sense. have a clash box of sorts, at least one that doesn't last long. Uh snare amount to plus interval between hits increased plus forty percent. Change damage formula to be fully standardized. Uh, you know, I, I'm not someone who uses snare much, so I don't really, don't really care to be honest. And the increasing the interval just makes snare last longer, so that could be that could go both ways. Might buy you a little bit more time. Let's say you use snare, and then because it lasts longer, you let you can actually recharge maybe your ultimate or another ability. But then again, you might get caught out for so long that other people can show up if you're getting hunted. You know, it goes both ways. Or yeah. whatever, to be honest. Aura speeds. The speed affinity should no longer affect the scaling of the aura's potency, meaning that there should no longer be additional reduced scaling on the speed buff. Alright, that sounds like whatever. Not, I don't think many people use speed anyways when power and resistance exists. Javelin. Standardized Javelin's hitbox to be the same regardless of shape. Ideally a standard cylinder cone-shaped box. There are a couple of projectile shapes for the spell that have a much larger hitbox than others, similar to some blast shapes. They should make them all the same. All right, whatever. Projectile size increased to 50%. Whatever. I I don't think... Hmm. I don't think the size was needed, to be honest. You mean the hitbox size? The projectile size plus 50%. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, that makes sense. The size of the hitbox, in my opinion, that's a pretty good change because it makes uh, the shapes purely co cosmetic. Rather than being a meta type uh, function, I guess. Yeah, I get what you mean. I, I mean, I've never used Javelin enough to actually care to look into the its intrinsics. Magma, what does Snare do? Because I've never seen it used, nor did I use it myself. Uh, it's just a mage grab move where you just like hold somebody in spot and then like attack them whilst they're on spot. It's just a mage grab move. 
All right, onto the surge change, the actual change we're here for. So you know how surge works, right? You said you've yep. seen it. Yep. So the user should have grab immunity while channeling, <laughs> should still be able to take damage from grabs, but not interrupted by them. What kind of nuisance, what kind of menace decided to put this change forward, huh? That's kind of whack. Like, it should be able to be completely interrupted. Exactly. It just, it just makes it too powerful. What kind of dumbass change is that? <laughs> when a, why, a, what? Just, why would we ever give an ability grab immunity? You're not a boss, man. You're not King Calvis, bro, to begin in that exactly, grab immunity. Exactly, bro. You're channeling a situational ability that can be overpowered in certain circumstances, not overpowered in other circumstances. You... It's an ability that you should be punished for, just like every other ability. What kind of dumbass change is this, man? All this is going to do is make those situations where you're cornered or you're lagging so bad you realistically can't escape even worse. What kind of stupid exactly. ass change is this? And it makes it so that other people can't help you. So, for example, if it was like a 1v2 situation, a surge spammer would al almost always win. Because they won't get, like, knocked out of it, right? Yeah. It's if grabs weird. can interrupt a 10-second cooldown close-range move, that move becomes completely useless. The point of Surge is to be a powerful move that you use wisely. What, what kind of exactly. dumbass change is, oh, d use, the, use the move stupidly, you should be able to still do a lot of damage. This just turns the move into a free... A free get off me card because now people are gonna have to focus on either out damaging you or just running away whilst they take all that damage. Stupid ass change. Damage multiplier should vary relative to 20% spread range. Base damage resistance increased. You have a damage resistance whilst using surge. What? Okay. Oh, okay. Surge size should scale with size affinity and attack size at 30% efficiency. And like decreased current 0 0.2 seconds. DOT damage should be floats instead of integers to prevent unintended damage thresholds to apply DOT. The DOT tick damage should just display with one decimal place visually. <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna start using floats instead of integers. I, I would have just rounded it down. Unless it's a uh, zero, then round up to one. Uh, what do we think, chat? Let's let's see what the chat thinks. I'll let uh, the poll... I'd say that's an L right there. Massive L. Surge rework. You're looking at this too much in terms of stupid mage users using surge at stupid times. If you use surge right, you perfectly zone them. They can't just instantly grab you. That's when you want to use surge. If you put yourself in that position, you shouldn't have grab immunity. Uh, do you just expect Surge to be free damage all the time? If I'm channeling an ultimate art, I should be able to get grabbed. You gonna give me grab immunity for channeling an ultimate art explosion? I don't think so. Just wait until uh, ultimate art Surge comes out, bro. Yeah, imagine ultimate art you Surge. Want... What are we gonna do then, huh? Well, they can just like fart on me and I die instantly. <laughs> and I can't cancel it. You just die immediately, one fart and I'm dead. Exactly, that's, that's I'm on that cliffside. In the future. I'm on that cliffside. One fall and I'm dead. Don't forget the startup time increase amount, making you even more vulnerable. Uh, like, they, they can make the startup time a gazillion seconds. Like, casino type odds right there, one to gazillion. But the whole point is it's an ability. There should be counterplay that extends beyond just escaping the ability whilst getting your ass whooped by a flurry of damage or trying to out damage them. Oh, yeah, yeah, it won't be free damage because of the startup and the cooldown. Uh, it's just stupid. What? So we take away grab immunity and balance it by giving it startup time. Is that really the thought process behind this? I guess it's kind of whack. Then then what? Then if that's how you want to balance it, it will get to a point where surge users are now complaining about their attack not shooting when they want it to. And then what? You're gonna make another band aid rework like this? 
Yeah. It goes it from, I'm getting efficient. grabbed too much to, my attack is never working when I want it to work. <laughs> Honestly, if it gets to that point, I have a feeling that Surge is either going to get so many band-aids that it's just going to become like the most like ugly meta that you've ever seen. <laughs> I can't wait for Ultimate Art Surge. <laughs> They're going to debuff it like crazy gravity. once it comes out. Not bad. See that? Yep. Impending buffs. That's a good point, Mama Trixie. What a name. Like, that's taking away responsiveness. And whenever there's no responsiveness, responsiveness what am I saying? No responsiveness or a lack of responsiveness, uh, that, that becomes really unfun. I'm going to just double musket surge, mages. You know what? Whatever. Whatever works, I guess. Well, once this change goes through, if it does, I don't think Vtex will because it's not highlighted in red, meaning it's not critical. It's not critical. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, let's end the poll. 66% L. So, not as divisive as I thought it would be. Oh, actually, I should say quite decisive. It's nearly 50-50. Okay, whatever. Boxing. Yes, yeah, style time increased from 0 0.5. Reduced max channeling duration from 9 to 7. Yep, those are those changes. Whatever. Boxing. Fighting styles. Speed 1.3 to 1.2. Blocking power 0. 0.15 to 0. 0.1. Blo bo blocks. I was about to say blocks fruit for a second. Boxing <laughs> is often used as a secondary style for the free blocking power buff, which is a large bonus. The current buff is as effective as using 6.7 perfect blocking Musgravite with max rolls without any roll sacrifice. You know what? I think they should have just made it so you only get the blocking power buff when you're actually using boxing, when you have it equipped. I don't think we should nerf boxing as a whole. That, that, all that's going to do is make people use Thermo Fist even more. Nobody's going to bother yeah. using boxing. What do you think, chat? What do you think, Wadget, as well, once I put up the poll? Uh, basically, what you said, people are just going to be using a lot... Uh, not not going to be using boxing as much as other fighting styles. Yeah. In favor of speed and blocking power. But boxing is a really good secondary fighting that... style because you got the free bonus. The free bonus I guess blocking so, yeah. power. And that's what they're trying to target. They're trying to target it as a second fighting style, which now is, in turn, reducing its effectiveness as a primary fighting style. Actually, yeah. It's, uh, every fighting style should be usable as a primary fighting style. And this change just makes it... <laughs> I don't know. Yep. Less adequate for that. I, I think, get rid of this. And I would personally make it so you only get the buffs... The blocking power buff when you have it equipped and you're actually using it. Yeah. Blocking itself requires good ping, but also Thermo Fist nerfs are going to give speed fighting styles a run for their money. Yeah, let's let's see, because Thermo Fist is getting an ass whooping right here. Let's see what this has to say. Let me end the poll. It reduced by 90% outside of combat, so you won't be able to just get full heat before fighting. Yeah, let, let's read this and then... Yeah. 68% L for the boxing changes. All right, Thermo Fist. Speed, 1.4 to 1.3, so I can see why boxing speed was reduced in accordance with Thermo Fist. Heat gain from okay, all sources okay. should be reduced by 90% while out of combat. M1 heat gain would also be reduced by 90% of current out of combat, but the M1 heat gain in combat will remain unchanged. Ideally, making it a long time to actually charge up heat out of combat would incentivize players to actually build up heat in fights, as was originally intended with the style. Power firm of his power and prevalence in the meta right now lies in the fact that preheating is so effective and easy to do before every fight, making its gimmick much easier to play around than intended. In a way, it's kind of like if Sailor Style didn't have its seawater drain at all. It's not a surprise that if Sailor Style had identical mechanics as Thermo Fist with its stats, it would be blatantly overpowered all right i'm gonna have to split up the thermo fist changes into multiple parts beginning with this part what do you think of the first part wadget the heat drain out of combat that's a pretty good change in my opinion 
It helps um, with the ganking, for example. Like, if someone comes at you randomly, they can't just charge up, like, their heat gain all of a sudden. They have to, like, come at you from, like, a base level, I guess. They'll get, they'll, they'll get more powerful as the fight goes on, which might throw you off. But overall, they'll be doing less damage. They'll have less speed. It's better for you, I guess. Yeah, I'm, and... I'm in favor of this change, this oh, mechanic good. here. I know and I said more... oh. it makes it more consistent, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I it makes it more consistent with the actual exactly, and that's what fighting I'm style makes it more of. consistent with the world, the world building, how fighting style is meant to be, I guess. Yeah, because like like they rightfully said here, the intention is different to how it's being used by people who exactly. Preheat. I think. I know I said previously with the dodge reflex change that I hate the whole in combat, out of combat, changing how different things work. But Thermo Fist is one of those flying styles where it really needs to have that kind of change, unfortunately. Preheating, using Thermo Fist at max power at all times instead of building up throughout a fight to get more powerful as the fight goes goes on. That was really stupid. So yeah, this is the one time, the only exception to my rule of in combat, out of combat changes. Yeah. It makes it more complex. It makes it so that you have to think before you start fighting. It's not like, exactly. it makes it less brain dead. It's just the amount of times just in a fight, like in a 1v1, you just have to preheat. So you can start with an advantage. You can start at your actual full potential. I think yeah. the, the only issue is like with the above change of making leap not at least give a grace period and just taking away from the overall amount of abilities, the pool of abilities available for you to maintain heat throughout a fight. That's unnecessary. If you make this change, you take away that leap change. Because then you can't use leap out of a fight to preserve its heat. And that's what that previous yeah. change was trying to tackle. I think overall I think this is a good change. From all these changes here. This is the one change that Thermophist really needs. Exactly. Yeah, that's the point. Thermo becomes more powerful as the point goes on. And it becomes less powerful as the fight goes on unless they are in an ocean. Yeah, exactly. Thermo... When a fight... The longer a fight goes on, the stronger you get. And that's what makes Thermophist scary. So yeah, like, like the doc says, if you take out that power gain throughout a fight aspect of Thermo Fist. That's when it becomes ridiculous. So that's a good change. Let's see how it plays well with these other changes, though. What it if makes Thermo it more in line with also give heat? Vice versa, counterpart, Sailor Fist. Exactly. So if you have, if you have like, someone who has Sailor Fist and someone who has Thermo Fist, they start fighting, Sailor Fist is going to start out stronger. But if it takes too long to end the fight, Thermo Fist, I mean, Sailor Fist will start out stronger. Thermo Fist will end stronger, Yeah, the kind of inverse. Yeah. That's really nice. Really nice point. Also, like or Krim, I've been reading your messages. I haven't just been reading them out loud. Is is Boxing Wallet any good? It's all right. It's, it's all right. I had a thought. What if Thermo Reflex also gave heat? I I'm unsure of that because the reflex was meant to be based off of how much heat you have. Yeah, that 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 makes sense more sense than having it use heat. I think I I think it should just give a grace period if anything. But then again, that that makes dodge reflex mechanics intervene with like magic mechanics. So instead of being separate, they become intertwined. Yeah. I'll, I'll just keep it separate. Cool. Anyways, change DOT to Seared, which deals 20% attack damage over 3 seconds. Old 35% over 5 seconds. This this sounds like a... I'll even say it. Seared should share the same synergies as the Scorch stats, as its new duration benefits those synergies more. So yeah, literally turning Thermo Fist from applying Burn to applying essentially Scorched. I... I think this goes both ways. Like, the whole... This only pairs well. Having a Scorched-type synergy, so short DOT but high tick damage, only pairs well with aggressive playstyles, and obviously that's what Thermo Fist is meant to be. 
So I get the yeah. change. But at the same time, I, I, just, I just dislike the idea of changing its DOT. What do you think? What's I type out this poll? Honestly, I don't mind this change. It's, it's more in line with the actual fighting style than having being burnt, I guess. Like, it, uh, how do you explain it? As the fight goes on, you you get hotter, right? Yep. Uh. So, and if you're if you're getting punched at high speed, technically you'd be seared rather than burned. You wouldn't be set on fire immediately, right? Yeah. That's not that's. It, I, I, I I'm like thinking about this in a yeah, more yeah, of a yeah. real way, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, you don't get you burned mean. like right as you get hit. You get seared, you get scor scorched. Yeah, so I get what you mean. having it last less, uh, not as long, but having it do more damage, that's a pretty good change, in my opinion. It makes sense. Yeah, and from from a purely balance aspect of things, having a scorched like DOT does make it just incorporate better with Vermofist. Yeah. You know, you want to apply that DOT consistently. And that's how you deal your damage by playing aggressively to constantly have it applied, which balances out the fact that it's so short. You know, so I, I'm fine with this change. I just dislike the fact that we're changing Thermo Fist from Burn to something else. But despite that nitpick, I think this is a positive change. I just wonder how its synergies are going to work. What are Seared synergies? Is it the same as Plasma synergies? Is it the same as Fire synergies? It's the same as Scorched, it says. Shares the same synergies as Scorched, yes, right? Shares the same synergies as Scorched, yep. This ensures Slurma Fist users to be aggressive and follow through with hits in quick succession in order to maintain a good amount of additional damage of its DOT. This change would strictly reduce the damage output of Thermo Fist somewhat, affecting passive Thermo Fist users a bit more harshly. Yeah, I, I get the thought process behind that. Let's take a look at Plasma's synergies. So Plasma has... 20% more against melting charred bleeding, 10% more against poison corroding petrified. Weird how it doesn't have a burn synergy. I, f I find that quite weird, but yeah. It it's an alright change. Let's see what chat says. Change Thermophist DOT, 76% W. Mostly in favor of it, I guess. Seven percent for five seconds is worse than six point six percent for three seconds in tick length and damage. Yeah, I think I'm fine with this change. It's just to really force Thermophis users to play aggressively. You want to make this DOT high damaging, not the impact damage, but the DOT. That way, you're forced to constantly reapply the DOT. So yeah. If if the math, if it maths out to that where it's lower damage, then that's quite pointless. Mm. As a thermo enjoyer, I like the suggested changes for it. Sounds like fun. That's actually another good point. I, I'm pretty sure all of us are fed up with Thermofist, so changing how Thermofist works to make it feel fresh is also a good change. Every, we just, everybody, like right now, I just, every fighting style user uses thermo fist or iron leg like we're just seeing oh, the same man. crap over and over again so it'll make it feel different knockback yes. like actually iron leg speeds being decreased melting corroding synergy being decreased that is a really fair change sailor style remove the cooldown on drinking seawater bottles that's a really good change Knockback. Knockback saying for some applicable techniques should no longer reduce the damage when toggled off. Knockback on fighting style techniques can be a positive in some situations and a negative in others. Therefore, it should not affect its damage, making the toggle solely based on the user's preference without a penalty. I guess we'll see how this plays out. Yeah. But knockback damage reduction did feel kind of pointless. Crash, attack speed and speed affinity should scale the crash's distance at 50% efficiency rather than 100%. This should not affect the travel time of crash, only the speed at which the user is moving. 
The crash technique at high speeds is oppressive and difficult to punish, and it's painfully short on slow style, such as Iron Leg. This should make the value speed on the ability more balanced, majorly affecting its frame data instead. What the hell is frame data? So what is frame data? I guess it's just to do with like FPS fluctuation. Oh, because sometimes okay. low FPS ends up being different to high FPS. I, I think yeah, it's a it good sense. change. Honestly, Crash Crash got to a point where with high attack speed you could just use it as a movement ability. So that's a fair change. Impact travel hitbox should be client-sided rather than server-sided. Server-sided hitboxes caused issues and made its registration inconsistent. Oh, that is good. That is good. All right, that is fair. Reduce crash impact travel hitbox size. 50% of AoE, 40% of AoE. Fair impact travel hitbox should only trigger on players and NPCs, not terrain objects, finally. <laughs> oh my goodness. The amount of times you use a crash and then your character just decides, oh, let me just quickly U-turn and then smack the ground rather than continuing forward was honestly ridiculous. So good change. That's why if you use like metal or earth iron leg, your crash just basically never goes anywhere half the time. It's always just clipping on the ground and then triggering. Yeah, it makes sense. Change damage formula to be fully standardized. That's fair. Makes it easier to balance in the future. Speed affinity should scale the rush down range slash distance at 50% efficiency. Okay, that's fair. Just toning down Warlock. Change the damage formula. Boils down to a 7% damage nerf. That's fair. Toning down Warlock. Change damage formula to be standardized. Boils down to a 15% nerf. That is fair. In fact, necessary on Warlock. Did you know why I did that? As a Warlock, you don't even need to use your other abilities. You can just spam Beam and Shot <laughs> and profit. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. That range that sucks. Uh, a few times. It really does. That's just... Yeah, oh yeah, I just spam Beam and Shot. <laughs> exactly. I just become like a tower defense tower, man. I'm like a... You know, like a monkey from Bloons. So I just stand still. I fortify up. Start throwing darts at me and I just, I just die immediately. You, exactly. Focus. Speed affinity should no longer affect the scaling of the focus's potency. Similar reasoning as speed aura. Alright, that's that's whatever. Like ir irrelevant aura variant, to be honest. Change damage formula to be fully standardized, that's fair. Selino. Downwards knockback reduced by 50%. The technique's knockback is far too drastic with large size. Only the final hit of Selino should be able to clash. That is a really good change. Selino is way too overpowered. You know what Selino is, right? Yep. The yep. combo attack that moves you forward a tiny bit, yep. right? So move forward slash, move forward slash, depending on how many times, well, what yeah. number you have it set to. That, that's a really good change in my opinion. Well, what do we think, chat? Selino on top, bro, exactly. Did they fix the rush down? I see no mention of it being fixed. Why do I want to play Warlord so much, bro? I'm still trying to get better build, but Treasure Charlock goes nope. Yep, yeah, that sounds about right. Have fun farming Blasted. Had two hours of luck, five, zero, sunken. I I've been there, bro. I've been there, bro. It really does suck. Just, Selino, man, was so OP. You it's so hard to hit them as they're moving throughout the attack. And yeah. you, you just get like cross mapped sometimes by that aoe bro they're not back it's like you just get slapped you just get backhanded <laughs> as you get flung into a different dimension i'm With not sure the about the final hit being able to mario clash. backhand <laughs> yep exactly that i'm not sure about only the final hit being able to clash because it looks weird if you're punching like that but no clashes happen that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Just Selino is one of those abilities where... Like, the, the ability itself, the action of moving forward as you attack is so good. Maybe if they make it so the final hit has, like, increased visuals or something, make it look different. So then there's, like, a justification for only the final hit. Yeah. Make, Doing give a it a difference so that you can actually see visually... Yeah. That it will have some sort of clash mechanic. Actually, that's not how we're thinking about that. Maybe 
like the first, if you have it set to multiple, let's say you have it set to three, the first two hits don't deal as much damage, but the final hit deals the majority of the damage. That way... As well as the crash, yeah. Exactly. I mean, so, as well as the crash. Exactly. So that way, the movement aspect of it isn't so oppressive. It's just the final hit that you have to look out for. Yeah. And that's normally when you can actually parry. The server finally decides, oh, this man pressed parry like five seconds ago. Let's finally honor it and let him parry. And then that's that way you actually parry the hard-hitting move. Selino is a move, all I can say. It truly is one of the moves of all time. Oh, there's a bucket load more changes. <laughs> Selino's ability to clash while moving makes it very oppressive and difficult to punish the attack midway. This should make it a bit of a risky option of approach for its high damage reward at higher amounts. Yep, so just basically talking about what we spoke about. Change yep. the damage formula to decrease base damage and, and increase power scaling. So That's it scales fair. as you go forward, I guess. Now it's saying the base damage of the move shouldn't be high. You need you need the power stat to make it powerful, which is fair. Oh, never mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, just base damage multiplier was certain amount. Amount one plus thirty percent. Amount three minus five percent. Zero point six times three to zero point five seven times three. Currently a bit too dominant of an option for going the furthest distance while having very efficient base damage. Uh, it sounds like whatever, to be honest. This is going to make damage, people use though. one. Yeah, this is going to make people just use one. Which, which I guess I'm fine with. The only problem of Selino is its movement when you have it set to 2, 3, 4, or 5. Yeah. Uh, but instead of doing this, I would have just made it so the final hit has increased damage. That way you don't need to buff it set to one and now if it's set to three if it's set to one because it's the final hit it's one hit it's the final hit it'll have the increased damage uh it's whatever it's turning down selino i guess all right onto weapons this is what me and wadget specialize in as we're both <laughs> warriors ranged weapons damage reduced by 20 percent what do you think about that? I think that's fine, honestly. Because, like, right now, um, what's it called? The Angel Bow? Yeah. Yeah, that does, does so damage. much damage with M1s. And usually, I know when I'm fighting you, you just spam me with them <laughs> and I just take so much damage. It's, it's, I think that's a good change. The issue honestly. is, like they said here, because they removed ammo, right? It now does the same damage if you just was always using gold bullets or whatever the best arrow was. Ah, oh, yeah, that makes... That makes some more sense as to why they reduce the damage then, yeah. I understand where it's coming from, to be honest. Because mm. just making it as if you was only using just a normal, normal, whatever the original bullet was called, or the original arrow. I get it. Uh, the only thing, I'd, what I dislike about this is using M1s was a little bit of a skilled move. Because you needed to position yourself right. You didn't have air pause to land it as if you used, let's say, the musket E. So it feels yeah. kind of bad in that sense. But I, I guess it just standardizes the damage just a little bit. M1s don't need enough. It's just a surge glaze. I guess that's a fair point. Especially now if surges have grab immunity. That's going to be really annoying. Uh, weapon enchant, tempered, range multiplier, minus 20%, dense, range multiplier, plus 40%. Okay, that's whatever. Weapon teleports. Cooldown sharing between weapon teleport skill has been reduced from 100% to 75%. Affected skill, scimitars, teleport, kai saber teleport, trias to teleport, TP skill, being used at higher rate is not nearly as oppressive compared to pre-reflex patches. Contributes positively to the viability of particular weapon loadouts with reduced cooldown sharing. I, I guess think that's, that's a good change. change. That's I think change. one of the abilities was shared at a 75%. Making it so that all of them are shared at a 75% is definitely better. Allows you to use more 
uh, of the same ability type weapons, if that makes sense. Yeah. I remember, I, I still remember the day they made the change where it's now shared. Just RIP, yeah. like, skims Kai and Triaster loadouts out. It was so For fun. Real. Triaster Bronze might be having a comeback. Well, let's see. Maybe you got like a 2 billion That's... percent damage buff. Let's see once we get to it. <laughs> maybe maybe the uh, the immunity that it gives <laughs> it will actually work. Can't Who wait. Knows? I can't wait. Bladed. So, Whirlwind startup time decreased. The startup increase was likely miscalculated and feels a bit longer than it's supposed to be. This change makes it feel slightly more appropriate. Okay. Rising Tide. Clash box duration reduced by 20%. That's a fair change. Especially since everybody and their grandma is using a sunken sword. Yeah. Katana. Cooldown decreased from 7 to 6. That's a fair change. Especially because of the dodge reflexes. Yep. That's a fair change. Dual bladed. Twin crescents. Startup minus 10%. Delay between slashes minus 25%. Much of the complaint regarding this move are based on how vulnerable it leaves you, as well as the delay in between hits. So reducing this delay can help make the move stronger in close range, with less of a need for attack speed functioning more like a two projectile variant of primal swipe. That's a fair change. Makes sense, yeah. That's a good change. Light bladed, so daggers, dagger throw, projectile speed increased by 15%. That's fair. Spiraling Fury distance increased by 10%, size increased by 10%. Attack speed and speed affinity should affect the skill's distance at 50% efficiency rather than at 100%. That sounds like a fair change. I mean, it removes the fun aspect of dagger because you could just send yourself flying. Especially if you had enough yeah. attack speed and you could keep the momentum. But I, I see why. Yeah, just warlords, thermo warlords could just fly up for free. So, need to change. Attack speed should no longer reduce the skill's travel duration. I guess that's a fair change. The, the only issue with Spiraling Fury is it feels so inconsistent. If I hit you mid-animation, it never gives you... and I never get the damage off unless I... Like, the impact is what gets you. The impact needs to exactly. get you instead of the actual spiraling part of it. So, I guess I need to just fix that. They said that they're going to make it so that the hitbox of the actual attacks are more in line with the visuals. Because I remember um, using it, and even though you were within that uh, spiraling attack visual, you wouldn't actually get hit unless you were like dead center of me. Yeah. So hopefully that also comes into play. I guess it's, yeah. it's equivalent yeah. move is Crash. Oh, I think Yeah. Maybe maybe it's not meant to do damage if you get caught throughout it. Maybe you need to, you need to impact to actually get the damage off. So maybe I'm just thinking of it wrong. But it just feels maybe. like one of those moves, since it you're spiraling, if I if I catch you whilst I'm moving with it, then you should take damage. But I don't know. Heavy bladed okay. striking gale projectile size 100 <laughs> percent The projectile size is much smaller than the skills visuals, making it confusing where it will land. This should make it more reliable in that regard. I I mean I I never, I never like changes that increase size, but I guess it's saying because its visuals are different to its hitbox and it needs to match it out. Then maybe that's why I, I would have just made the the hitbox smaller instead of increasing. Uh, which attack was striking Guild? The three tornadoes. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was either that or the tornado move. Let's see. So, where's the swords? Come on, where's the Grey Axe? Was it? Alright, whatever. Look, come on, just show me. Just show me the abilities. Devastate, Swing, Striking, Gale. It's the Axe. It's the Axe Tornado move. Oh, okay. Yeah, the projectile size. It was quite, quite small compared to the actual visual. It looked huge, but it would never hit. Yeah, so I guess it's just making the visuals more consistent with a hitbox. So I guess that's yep. okay. Claws. Primal swipe. Projectile speed plus 25%. This skill is the slowest projector in the game whilst also having the shortest range. This should make it a bit more feasible to land in the world of dodge reflexes. That is fair. But nobody uses claws anymore. People used to use it all the time. Now nobody uses it. It's just exactly. been like wiped. 
projectile lifespan minus 20% maintains the current skill range. That's that obviously makes sense. In accordance with the previous one. Beast Instinct. Interval between hits slash active duration decreased. This skill's current active duration is too long, causing it to be unviable and easily avoidable in PvP. Reflex is especially allowed to be easily dodged. This reduced interval would have the unique counterplay of being fully auto-parried due to the significant decrease in between hits, making it one of the few skills to be able to be fully parried by holding block. This makes the skill more interesting to fight against. Oh, that's cool, I guess. So in exchange for dealing a higher amount of DPS, you'll be able to block it a, a lot more, which makes sense. It also makes it more viable because you won't just get punished for it immediately after you use it. Yeah. That's pretty good. I, I like this change because it's going to bring Claws back. Cl claws are so back. Claws are so back. We are back. We are. The furries are coming back, boys. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I need to, like, ring up Ruben Sim. I need oh, to no. inform him. There has He's been a ring huge... up Pyrocynical right now. No. Ruben Sim. <laughs> Who's going to win in a war, Ruben Sim or Pyrocynical? I'll put that up as a poll. Who wins in a fight? I think I think Ruben Sim wins. All right. I don't even know if half my viewers know who Pyrocynical is. Uh, you know what? I don't either. I just know that <laughs> some of our friends mention it and say they, oh yeah, he likes furries. Oh no. Just like, oh okay, guess he's a furry then. Ruben Sim Furry Hitting feels super childish. Bro. Bro has his own opinions, man. We live in a we live in a society chat. We live in a society chat. That's all I can say while getting limited on stream. Alright, on to <laughs> Bludgeoning. Raging impact and lag minus 10%. Skill is in a decent uh, skill is in a decent. Skill is in a decent with high attack speed. Skill is in, in a decent. A decent. Skill is in a decent. But it's unlag paired with its uncanny, uncanny startup. Makes it difficult to try following through regardless of stats. The attack speed nerf will especially hurt the skill. Alright, whatever. Brutal rush. Projectile speed 20%. Hitbox 20%. The skill is difficult to land and leaves you wide open upon missing due to its lag. This should be more reliable. What, what the... What... I ain't even gonna bother looking for the weapon that is referencing. Polearm. Ethereal Flash. Size 20%. Currently, it's extremely Ooh. small with terrible size scaling. Skill needs to be easier to use. Cooldown. Let's go. Seven to five. We, are, we are so back, chat. We are back. We are so Ethereal back. Ethereal Flash coming back. Let's go. Brutal Rush is the hammer throw. Like, such an irrelevant weapon, man. The hammer. Who the hell is using the hammer, the bro? The hammer throw. I, I swear it was like the morning star throw. I, I remember you used to try and like get me with that all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, to be like, let me try something. Let me try oh. something. And then throw tons of hammers everywhere. I'm just like dodging them all. Exactly. And then the one time you hit it, I just die immediately. So I guess that makes it more hittable. That's pretty yeah. good. I mean, hammer isn't back, even with that change. But you know what is back, chat? <laughs> Triester of Bronze. We, we are so back, chat. Finally, the boss weapon is actually usable. Finally. I can't wait for Conjurers to gain access to it. That would be very interesting to see. 57% Ruben, 42% Pyro. Rest in piss, Pyro Cynical. <laughs> Shield. I ain't even gonna bother this to say. I don't care about this change. Shield. Increased clash strength. This skill should have stronger clashing power than blast at the very least. I mean, that makes sense. It's a goddamn shield, right? Exactly, yeah. And like, minus 20% helps make the rebound mechanic of the skill more able to be utilized by giving a bit more time to move around. That's mm. fair. Honestly, they, they should just give shield like a two gazillion billion percent damage increase. And then maybe, just maybe... One person will use it. Just maybe. Exactly. Landing the attack should interrupt the startup slash casting frames of the target. Give the skill subtle CC utility to play more into the defensive niche of the shield type. I'm pretty sure later on they... Actually, I'm not going to spoil it because it's a warrior change I want you to hear about. 
Oh, okay. Okay, rapier. Startup time increased. That's fair. Clash book reduced. That's fair. Rapier was so overused. Staff. St Fury of the Sea. Oh, boy. Oh. Magma do Atlantean shield build for all? Shut up. I ain't doing that. Uh, Fury <laughs> of the Sea should no longer be able to proc gels. Brings parity or pulsar in this regard. Well, I guess that makes sense. If they if they think of it as being the same as pulsar, I guess that obviously makes sense to change. Attack speed imbue, speed affinity, and projectile speed affinity should scale the tick rate. That is, I think this is a healthy change for stuff. Definitely, yeah. Because either you go no attack speed just to make the most of it, or you go high attack speed and don't use it. So th this should... I mean, ideally, we would be able to set its speed like Mage can or Pulsar. But since it's Warrior, we can't do that. So this is a way to incorporate that kind of scaling mechanic. For that yeah. weapon, sir, fair change. Rifle. Clash box duration reduced by 30%. For being a hit scan, extremely fast projectile, the clash box duration should be quite short. I mean, that makes total sense. It's a it's a gunshot. It shouldn't really be clashing, to be honest. That's true, yeah. It should be able to go through clash boxes, I think, but it shouldn't clash other things. All right, miscellaneous. Where's the link to the doc? It's the pinned, pinned message in the chat, Leon. I'll add it to the stream description afterwards as well. Fixed charging skills being affected by FPS. It takes much longer at low FPS. Fixed passive energy regen. No, fixed I... stamina regen. You know, no wonder why stamina feels like it never recharges on stream. <laughs> I'm playing on like 15 FPS chat and I'm dying to stamina. It's because you guys are lagging me so bad I cannot even regen stamina because of low frame rate. They're oh, doing God. it on purpose so they can beat you. <laughs> No wonder why I felt like I just I, wanted to lower the FPS. Exactly. So you wouldn't no wonder why I was losing my mind. No one. I, I literally, in my time doing those warrior streams, I was internally raging, thinking, "Why am I dying so much to stamina, bro?" Now I know why. It's this crap. Learn so much about how the game works through this stuff. This is, yeah, this is how I learn how Easy. the game works. It's through the balance dock, projectiles. Fix the projectile hitbox and projectile visuals not scaling with attack size and possibly tears. All right, I guess that makes it consistent with its visuals. Fix issue with aim target or registering an enemy's arms, legs, and head as a target. Fix weapon extending the user's hitbox. That one was crazy. Because like when I first saw that, I was like, what the heck? Since when was this a thing? <laughs> like... Why Why should the size of a sword on your back increase your hitbox? Like, what if they, like, create a weapon that is, like, made to be huge <laughs> and this change didn't actually happen? Yeah, well, you just hit, like, the corner of this guy's sword that's, like, 10 meters away and you'd still get the damage off. That's crazy. This should be a change that... that imagine that you just was prioritized with a Final Fantasy-type blade. You just got that giant blade and then your hitbox exactly. is, like, five times bigger now. He used Dot Render Stepped. Oh, bro. John coming through with some Roblox dev jokes right there. <laughs> if I, let's see what Render Step does. I wonder. Run service Render Stepped. Fires every frame prior to the physics simulation. The step argument indicates the time that has been elapsed since the previous frame. As stepped fires every frame, it runs on a variable frequency. This means the rate will vary depending on the performance of the machine. If the game is running at 40 FPS, then stepped will fire 40 times per second. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I see. I see why you say that, John. I see it. <laughs> he must have definitely used this then. If that's the change that needs to be made to fix it. Bro, bro was scaling on frames. No wonder why it felt lower at low frames. Oh, man. Modifiers. Fix equipment modifiers having approximately 2% less stats than intended. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I, I guess. didn't know that okay. was the case. But okay. I, how, how do they know this? <laughs> when do they figure it's this out? It's sept. Oh, man. I think I'm dyslexic. Oh, man. Well, we, we got the gist of it. Yeah. 
Uh, balance box grabs cancelling when grabbing someone about to exit and lag. Thank God. Can you make a petition oh. for VTX to add a squeaky sound squeaky to boxing? Why, why would there be a squeaky sound? Honestly, this is... Out of everything from this balance dock, this is the one thing I was hoping for. When, when your grab would cancel, honestly, you just feel like giving up, uninstalling Roblox, you go for a walk, and just like, enjoy the moment. For real, because you just go straight through them and do a like solid yeah. amount of damage instead of actually grabbing them. I've, I've done that so many times, it's crazy. That, and at least then you get the damage. Half the time also, you just, you get the grab and then it just stops. Oh yeah, so I remember like, the we did that a few times, we just sit there staring at each other, like, <laughs> looking into into each other's eyes for a few seconds, like, what just happened, bro? Yeah. Oh, welcome <laughs> to the stream, RC, let me make you a mod, another YouTuber to make mod. Oh, and God? Right. Perfect. So, fix snare not doing damage to the target on grab cooldown and show that if you land the skill during grab cooldown, it does not put you in heavy end lag. That's a fair change. Missing snare, it's, it's the equivalent of like swerving and smacking into a tree. Like <laughs> that, like oh, missing God. missing snare was a death sentence. So if oh, you hit damn. snare and then you still get, you hit snare and then it doesn't hit for whatever reason, you shouldn't get the end lag, thank God. Fixed the lack of scaling of attack size, size affinity, scale at 50% efficiency for now. And that's on Surge and Pulsar. I'm fine with that, to be honest. There's no way I want like a Earth. A Pulsar the size of Earth itself to start tickling my feet or something, I don't know. Energy cost should be decreased with amount similarly to Leap. That is fair. That honestly makes sense. Yep. Statuses. Fixed damage synergies against the target afflicted by two DOTs being halved. Uh, yeah, so I, I remember when they made that change and then Acid and Poison dropped a few tiers and now it's back and now Acid and Poison are back up. Bleed status. They got their DOT back up. Exactly. They can stack DOTs. Nice. Bleed status from non-stackable sources should properly refresh and reapply as how other statuses do. Fair. Fixed weapon status oh, effects yeah. synergy they didn't is not do that applying before, correctly. Did they? Crazy. Yeah. Okay. It's funny when the they make a change and then that change doesn't actually get implemented properly. So they have to make another change to fix that change. Exactly. Severe band-aid problem. But yeah, go ahead. Fixed weapon status effects synergy is not applying correctly. Finally. For example, Skull Tooth plus Explosion doesn't petrify, nor does Skull Tooth plus Triaster. Finally. We, we are Let's so go. up, chat. Warrior is so up right now. We are eating good. Finally getting those synergies in. Fix Savant's being able to block with shield below 20 weapon stat. Arrest and piss Savant. Non-weapon builds have their weapon damage lowered by 50% rather than 80%. Being a non-weapon build should lower weapon power scaling by 80%. You should only receive 20% effect from your power as a non-weapon build. Alright, whatever. Just making it so Makes you have sense, to be a class to make the most of that class. But also yep. you can still use weapons, just not as effective. Which is really important if you're double heat as mage, because then you cannot kill sharks or anything. You need to use a weapon. Fix bow and ones, yeah. aiming where you clicked 0 0.3 seconds ago, being unflickable basically. Th this, needs, this change needs to be carried over to high attack speed, because it's bugged right now. You should no longer be able to drink seawater whilst using a dodge reflex. That, that is fair. That was quite stupid how you could do that. Is attack speed getting nerfed? Yeah, they toned down its formula and made it mostly affect only projectile speed, not end lag and star up time so much. Animations. Yep. Fixed leg across and leg impact animations hiding magic circles. All right, that's whatever. Dodge reflex. Fixes reflexes not recharging when touching the ground underwater. That is so vital. Especially if you're trying to get the uh, Whispering Cavern secret. That's true, yeah. Fix Iron Skin's damage resistance. I, I don't care. Never use this trash. Just, I hate potions. 
Invisibility potion should no longer be voided when using combat instead notifying the player that they are unable to activate the effect. So, okay. Drinking from a brew with two active potion effects should no longer void the drink. That, that's unfortunate. Imagine just losing the... You just lose the effect. That sucks. Fix throwing potions, ignoring drawback damage. <laughs> that's funny. Do, do throwable bleed potions scale off of power? I never knew that. That just sounds ridiculous. Oh, damn. Any nerfs towards worry and the attack size scaling? They, for the most part, not really. Worry, warrior is eating good right now. Agility. Actually, defense. Armor enchants modifies jewels. Defense increased by 22.2%. Since defense no longer affects health regeneration in combat, players having somewhat higher defense should be more reasonable as it now will only make them more tanky, rather than making them also have greater sustainability in longer fights. In raw numbers, That's health regen good. accounts for 1 to 11, balance for 60 seconds. I guess that makes sense. No, Didn't no they say that they were going to make a new uh, stat called health regen? Yep. They yeah, are also going to add... Makes sense now. Because yep. if imagine if you had like defense with high like HP and it gave you extra regen as well as the regen stat, that would have been crazy for <laughs> vitality based users. But separating them out, it, it just makes it more. Chat, what is that reliable, stat that deals more damage the more HP your target has? Drawback. This, not drawback. Drawback takes away damage uh -huh. if you attack. There was one where you deal more damage to players with more HP. I think it was called piercing or something like that. Oh, is Armor that a new piercing. one? Yeah, it's a new one. Oh, okay, okay. Piercing, yep, yeah, that was it. That's so this good. is just going to make piercing more effective now that most people are going to have more defense as well. Indeed. So it'll actually make people run piercing, just maybe. Agility scaling reduced from 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.5 on dodge reflexes and dodges. Fair. I just... Agility sucks on high ping servers, so get rid of it, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gradual level scaling added, plus 10% per 100 levels. Oh, I okay. guess that's a that's nice change. Cool. I guess the higher your level, the stronger you get, so you can now just climb faster, run quicker. Definitely. Charging this energy should be noticeable gradually. until the 100 level cap increases, for example, 200 to 300. Yep. But for a lot of magic type levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see it over time. Piercing makes you do more damage to blocking enemies, I thought. That sounds like a cool mechanic, actually. My 200 jelly build. Bro. Bro, it's it's over for you. Statuses. <laughs> Charging energy should gradually and continuously drain from the duration of the most recent stack of the status per second charging rather than instantly clearing the status Status duration removal per second charging should vary in rate by status duration. That is a fair change, because if you're wind and you are poisoned, you just charge for like a fraction of a second, it gets wiped. You clear that DOT from you. So oh, this makes yeah. sense. Like if, if it's a really powerful DOT, you should charge it for longer to actually make it clear. That's fair, but let's see what it says. Clearing status right now is too easy and inhibitive of DPS gain from DOTs. It makes some fights very matchup dependent, especially for magics that heavily rely a lot on their DOTs, such as Acid and Poison. This change should fix that. Yep, I think that's a fair change. Uh, I, I made a Wind Mage slot, not to use Wind Primary, but to use my second magic, Magma Primary, and man, just having Wind as a primary magic just for that recharge being able to clear DOTs is insane, man. It's just that good. Somebody inflicts, like, fire on you. Oh, that's your damage gun. I just recharge for a fraction of a second. They inflict poisoned. That's gone. Po poison users just can't exist. You just tap the shift button primary. and it's gone. Crazy. To see the document, there's a link so you can see it for yourself. It's the pin message for anybody who wants to see it. You know I think a cool change would be to allow for players to change their recharge 
So if you're a mage and you have, let's say, wind and magma, you should be able to choose which reflex you want to use. So I can swap to magma's reflex, not reflex, I mean recharge. You can swap to magma's recharge or you can use wind's recharge. I think that'd be a really cool change, really cool feature. Yeah. Either that, that or have it so that once you unlock your secondary magic, it com it becomes like a combo of the two different charge styles, which makes it more like... That actually makes it... Uh, like how Vitality has the blue aura around whatever magic you're using. If you're a paladin, as yeah, a mage, yeah. you should be able to get both. That's really nice. Uh, that would be a very cool change. Poison users facing maximum HP paladin build with magic. They, they are never making any progress. Magma, you can waterproof fire. We we have to wait for that. What what do we think of the Q and A stream? By the way, chat. Was it a good stream? Was it a bad stream? I think it was a mess stream. It gave some insight, but I was kind of disappointed with the vast majority of questions. But what it did do a good job of was just humanize Vtex, because man, now that people have heard him, people are going to be more reasonable. Everybody was just shitting on the guy, like even I was at times. But now people are going to see him on a you know, more human level. He actually spoke about the changes, like optimization, and people are going to be a little bit more considerate. I don't know about you, but I wasn't like that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was always thinking about, oh, this guy's going to make a book on his his game. That sounds pretty cool. I can't wait for that. Yeah, he did say AO is going to be the last thing he does, and then he's going to become an author. Yeah. We need That's like one of the questions. main reasons I play Arcane Odyssey. Literally just the lore. Even though I don't know he's most a of it, I just, player. like when when do you think he's gonna be able to finish this game? When do you think he's gonna be able to make that book? I'm really excited for that, honestly. Yeah, see, if it was Selec Torch who was the the interrogator, I would have loved if he could maybe have. Like, I understand why he had to read from a document. Of course, it's gonna be way too harsh for in real time gather questions, especially from the chat because that chat's chat rate was insane man it was like 20 billion <laughs> messages every second so i understand yeah. why you read from a document but man it just it felt so bad the questions being asked and how it was being asked and just the atmosphere i, I remember uh, tech level pointed out that he just skipped a question and then select talk was like i didn't skip a question uh I i'm just reading them in order and then Tech was like, nope, you missed this one, and then he answered it. I just, I just felt so awkward watching that interaction. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, it just... It was a good stream. But, man, I just wish the questions were better. I will buy Vtex books, actually. Bro bro's transition from game dev to author is going to be one to behold. Yeah. I was, I was, like, originally excited for that. If you want, we can even anyway, carry on. Oh, react to yeah. the stream. Maybe another day, maybe tomorrow or something. Yeah, cool, cool. Could do that. I literally just cannot. Pl I cannot be bothered to play the game, man. Just anything that involves the game that doesn't involve me playing the game, you know. Yeah, it also like make me like go through the stream and actually <laughs> hear the questions and answers actually made. I might. I haven't watched it at all. I might get permission. From Select Torch or I don't know. I might, if I try ping VTX, I might get banhammered. But just like <laughs> make a highlights video of the key questions answered. Yeah, or try to get the document that they read from, so that we could go or through the them document. As well. Yeah. Anyways, let's get back to this doc and finish it up. We're on twenty-two out of twenty-seven. Drawback, drawback self damage should cap at X percent of your base max HP and drawback damage before. Being the amount of drawback you have, drawback damage cap. So it's base HP, not current HP is essentially the change. Which I guess yeah. is uh, fine. Uh, playing against high power mages who just can, like, it's like the drawback doesn't matter to them. So that's a fair change. It makes the drawback aspect of it a little bit more heavier and something you have to deal with. Ah, uh, grabs, grabs of upward knockback should consume should consume the victim. Oh man, some furry vor. Oh no, bro. The victim's air movement and reflex charges. I I don't know about that change. 
I mean, I get why they're making it so easy to just dodge reflex away. But I don't know about that. Consume a dodge reflex or air movement? Uh, nah. Nah. Non-dash grabs. Brutal rush snare should no longer share cooldowns with dash grabs. That's a fair change. There was literally no point to use snare if you had any other grab. Cooldown sharing between all dash grabs reduced from 100% to 75%. That is fair. Reduced nice. T-jump stamina cost from 30 to 20. Thank God. <laughs> You're going to be living lavish now. Yep. I'm a... I'm still waiting on stamina regen gems, though. Replenish stamina uh -oh. by 50% when killing a player. That's all right. That is pretty good. Ability to use ground dodges. Ability to use ground dodges should not be disabled while blocking. Should remain preventing the use of dodge reflexes while blocking, but you should still be able to block right after using a dodge reflex to keep things fluid. See, if they're going to make that dodge reflex change, then this is necessary. Of course, so you can get away, but reduce the damage you take. This this is a required change. Barriers. Yep. Collision replaced with weak clash boxes, and using a skill should instantly cause barrier to disappear. Clashing power oh, should be good. a little weaker than a blast. Solve issues with your own barrier blocking the use of projectiles. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Got me, like, dreamy bullying thank right you. now. Thank but... you. It was so AIDS when you, like, ice barriers, any barriers, I'm just using ice barriers as the example, you dodge reflex in the air, there's an ice barrier, you try to use a musket shot, nope. It's just Zero it's, own it block just and clashed. just doesn't go through. Then yep, you get you barraged by the enemy. Attacks. Yep. So painful. Dodge reflex already has a cap of two and it feels great the way it is now and keeping track of air movement is already fine by the way it is right now. Exactly. They don't need to add a in combat out of combat reflex change or consume dodge reflexes as they put <laughs> it. Iron arms. Base distance reduced by 20% as a downside for a dodge of high damage reduction. That is fair. Ekrix. Base damage resistance reduced from 50% to 10%. That is a hefty nerf. God damn. Giant enough. I think they were only using that uh, fifty percent for testers. I guess not meant to actually be something that would come out. Ekrix was so Ekrix. good, man. But they they make it wait, 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 wait. Is Ekrix is Ekrix in the game? It's the Vitality Dodge Reflex. The it's, oh, if you've never seen it, you dodge reflex with a blue haze behind you, and because it's the Vitality Dodge Reflex, it reduced your damage by a lot. I, I so never 50%. actually saw that in game. Yeah, well, I'm glad you didn't because fighting people with it was so painful. So they oh, reduced man. it from 50 to 10%, reduced its base distance by 5%, but made it so it scales with vitality at 50% efficiency, capping at 40%. So yeah, I think that's a good change. Means you actually have to invest vitality for damage reduction now instead of getting it for free. That's pretty good. Makes Knight a little bit more less OP compared to Warrior. Ekrix distance scales inversely with Vitality at 15% efficiency, capping at minus 20%, with the base distance nerf included. 60% Vitality investment would have a 40% resistance and a minus 20% distance compared to before with these changes. That's fair. Yep. Toning down what is already an overpowered dodge reflex. Best dodge reflex by far. Renown. Hunting. Upon succeeding or failing a hunt, the player that was hunted is unhuntable for five minutes. The hunted player can still take any valid poster though, and that will still trigger hunting interactions with the player they are hunting. So you can't just get farmed. So you can't get farmed. That's all right. Radial combat timer from hunting should not apply to players that have recently joined. Gives the players time to load in and see if the server is right for them before proceeding. That, nice. that is a really good change. Having neutral makes reputation makes what? Makes it so that people can't just grab a banner that just spawned in and just kill you immediately. For real. I had to deal with that once by you had to the do cringe that. clan. Why? Like, a few times. Yeah. I think you should have that invulnerability for like one minute. Like they should increase it. Or at least until you use... Actually, then people will just abuse it. Just... 
Make it so the invulnerability you get matches up to how long it takes for you to load in, man. Some, imagine playing on a dusty Chromebook and it takes like five minutes to load in. And then all of a sudden you just keep getting farmed like three billion times whilst you're still on a black screen. Yeah. That needs to be it's sorted out. Pretty variable depending on what kind of like system you're running the game on. But I think that is a must need to change, yeah. Even if it exactly. would be hard to implement. And like like they say here, let players load in and see if the server is right for them. Exactly, yeah. Having neutral reps should not allow you to hunt other players. You can still hunt NPC bounties of either alignment. I I mean that sounds pointless, but it's alright, I guess it's not gonna change much. Yeah. Most neutral players wouldn't go out hunting people anyway, so Exactly. You do not have a poster while you have neutral, so this brings parity in this regard. Okay, then that's fine. If you don't have a poster, yeah. you can't take posters. That's completely fine. Makes more sense. Remove all, po remove all posters of players from inventories after that player is successfully hunted. Helps make the aforementioned hunt immunity work properly. Yep. Much need to change to make things consistent. Having neutral reps should remove any player's poster you have in your inventory. Yep. Goes alongside with the previous one. I think they haven't mentioned it, but they need to fix the bug where if you have somebody's poster and then they leave the game, well, they combat log, you it's as if you hunted them for some reason. You get infamy and it says you successfully hunted them, even though you possibly never interacted with them. They need to fix that. Has anyone else faced that? You have somebody's poster, then they combat log and then you you successfully complete the hunt on them for some reason. I think really I've only weird. had that happen to me once. It was really weird, yeah. I was, yeah, like, I was confused on what was I've happening. I got somebody's poster, and then bro combat logged, and then I just got a crap ton of infamy from him. And I was like, oh, <laughs> when did this Ooh, happen? Oh, free infamy. But that's oh, not really a good change, is it? Oh, piece of cake. I mean, it's... <laughs> I did it one time, they died I... to an NPC, and I got the hunt. It's so weird. <laughs> like, I never oh, saw man. the guy. I just hunted him somehow. In spirit, I hunted him somehow. Uh, base climbing speed increased by 50%. That's fair. Uh, I wonder how fast max climbing speed will be now then with this change. You probably just disappear in like a matter of frames. Just to start climbing up it like <laughs> like a spider at like lightning speed. Like a drug addict seeing fent. Like you're just oh no. Really up gunning. I think that's gonna... That's gonna... Uh, I'm gonna get limited now. You're gonna get limited, yeah. Auto climbing immediately after dodging often eats momentum and leaves you vulnerable. This should hopefully make auto climbing less intrusive in fights and more of a helpful mechanic. Disable auto climb for 0.4 seconds. That's all right. Anything that stops me from climbing the arena flooring. Health gained is for whoever does the most damage instead of who got the last hit. Uh, I guess that's all right. Makes Enchants. Sense, I guess. Enchant scroll should be able to use cannon siege weapons. The enchant would increase damage and range of these weapons by the same amount as amplified and strong enchants. Mixed charged scrolls substantially more useful and valued. Yeah, that's a fair change because charged is such a useless scroll. Let's see if we can find it on the wiki. Uh, the only valuable scrolls are powerful and armored. Anything that makes the other scrolls a little bit better. Yep. Brush, show me. Charged. A scroll containing the charge enchant, when clicked on inventory, can be applied to one items. It can be applied to armor. What does it give? It gives, what, intensity, I think it was? Whatever. I made charged usable, bro. I have a charged build. Bro, bro is already on it. Bro is on it like a bonnet. Oh. Alright. Armor stats, armor, amulet. Fair. Fair amulet slash archon quartz amulet should give 25% more stat. I'm fine with that. Nobody uses amulets anymore, so. If you can't use gems, maybe a little bit of a increased stat as a trade off would be nice. So that sounds fair. Sorcerer, Wizard, Power, don't care. Dark Bronze, increase attack speed. Siren, increase agility. And increase attack speed. 
Match buff Siren Pants. There we go. It, it was so weird how... The Siren Bracelet didn't give the same amount as the Siren Pants when literally every other armor set has like matching stats between accessories and pants. Yeah. So, thank god for that. Let's see if I can... Let's see if I can find the Bobby Newbie website just to see what the difference was exactly. Where is a armor build link? Here it is. Okay, don't mind, don't mind the inverted colors chat. Don't mind the like demons from below trying to suck my soul out of my body type color scheme here. Uh, 13 agility, 22 attack speed compared to 22 and 37. That is a huge difference. So thank God they're finally fixing that. Theorgist, yep. attack speed, 34% buff. All right, also awakenings only, and roots. Uh, only root. Only for Theorgist. Magic fighting styles, second magic fighting styles. Second magic fighting style requirements should be reduced accordingly. Mage, 120 magic to 90, 40 slash 70 to 30, 100. To 60, 70 to 60, gives each of these builds a usable awakening immediately with an adequate amount of customization, lessening the need to highly invest into a single stat as a hybrid savant. For Vtex, please keep in mind that second magic fighting style for pure builds remain quickly outpacing second magics for non pure builds, regardless due to the nature of the investment. This simply makes their awakening usable upon obtainment, regardless of investment, and high single stat savant is addressed with its link changes. It will also allow for most of these builds to actually get their second full common spell technique kit before the second awakening. All right. It it just makes the vitality hybrid builds a little bit more usable. You actually, if you went paladin instead of mage, you just lost shape customization, which was really not worth it. Yeah, but they're changing it so that shape customization is gonna be like they're gonna share the same hitboxes and stuff. So I guess it's not really a needed change anymore. But I still like <laughs> to see it. Yeah. I mean, I'm never going to play these vitality-based builds unless Warden comes out. Or yeah. if it's Knight. Charging energy while a magic aside from your first is selected should use the selected magic for clearing statuses instead. Thank God. <laughs> this is what I've been asking for. I, f I, I want to yes. be able to have oh. Win second and Magma first so I can profit Magma's stupid DPS and Win's stupid recharge. Thank God. Warrior. Okay, this is what I wanted to get to, Wedged. Warrior, Ooh. an additional fourth weapon slot should be unlocked Ooh. as part of the Awakening. A fourth weapon slot opens up an expanded skill kit for Warriors, which amplifies that their versatility big. gimmick. That is actually Thank big. God. Warrior gets just something. It still, it still doesn't change the fact that Warrior's Awakening is so bad. Like, you don't get a mechanic like you do any other Awakening. It's just staying honestly, pieces, but it's something. Having access to another weapon and basically another six skill sets down the line, that's going to be really, really OP. So I don't mind this change. Just until they can figure something out for Warriors Awakening, I think this is definitely much needed. Yeah, it works well in the long run. Everyone is just going to use shield. Fourth weapon slot is straight going to be shield for everyone on Warrior, exactly. We're going to profit I don't free think block so. and bow. So. Hopefully, if they add more weapons. In fact, in the Q&A, Vtech said he doesn't want to add weapons until the current weapons get more abilities. So, what? Uh, Realistically, what are you I going to use that makes sense. in the meantime? For the fourth, it's going to be the shield 100%. Mm. Warrior is still kind of poo. It, it's, it really is, though. Until Warrior gets like a leap of sorts... It's kind of ass. Especially with night. It's always night. I'm just happy that they're setting things up to make it better. Yeah, a lot of these changes just feel like setup for what's to come, so. I'm I'm eager for this. I mean I'm gonna stat reset to Conjurer anyways, but this I'm just I'm just happy for Warriors. Conjurer. Reduced imbue size for magic imbued weapons by 0.1. I mean, that kind of sucks. 
Now that weapons are proper affinity, stackable with exotic enchants, it is necessary to make their imbue size consistent with warlocks as weapon affinities will work multiplicatively with the size of the imbue. This will also balance most conjure imbues with warlord imbues, allowing us to revert some imbue affinity damage nerfs that make it difficult for some imbues to be efficient. For example, something like light iron leg was not an issue at all when we nerfed lights imbue with affinity. Lights imbue affinity a ton. Uh, you know what? Whatever. We'll see how this plays out. It's, it's for balance. It's toning down conjurer. Yep. Uh, Warlock. Fighting style damage synergy should no longer apply while the fighting style is imbued. The imbued magic damage synergies will still apply at 50% effectiveness. Example, Iron Leg imbued with sand magic. So instead of using Iron Leg plus sand synergies, the damage calculation will only take sand synergies into account plus 5% bleed synergy. Uh, you know what? Fine, whatever. Whatever. This this makes it more consistent. This makes Warlock less OP. And it makes it makes the synergies more predictable. Cause honestly, who who the hell knows what like fighting style specific synergies there are? Like what does Iron Leg synergize with, bruh? That is true, that is true. Never thought sure about it know. actually. That makes it a little bit simpler. Katanas or claws are meant to have leaps, but they still haven't added it. Well, oh boy, I'm gonna have to like lobby Vtex and his shadow government to get that added. Okay, imbues. Magics oh, yeah, that create true. rubble, puddle, cloud, piles, and or have environmental interactions, such as burning, icing, draining structures with attacks, should have their imbued attacks inherit them as well. Affected imbuement acid, water, magma puddles. Fire, shadow, ice, magma, plasma, environmental interactions, earth, ice, wood, metal, glass, crystal, rubble, sand, snow piles, poison, ash clouds. Wind boxing should add knockback to attacks or otherwise amplify knockback. Finally. Finally, man. I swear they, I swear this was added in the goddamn previous patch notes for 1.14. It just never made it. This should be in red. This should be a red critical change. Goddamn. Like ash, not leaving ash clouds on imbued attacks was so stupid. Poison not leaving poison clouds? Stupid. Wind not having knockback? There's a reason why it's end of C tier, n probably even D tier, if I wasn't being generous in the Warlock tier list. Th this should be red. Critical. Needs to be added. Oh man. Imbue affinity. Hopefully it does come in though. So, Warlock. I'm, I'm uh, actually, as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Warlock and Conjurer just, like, power aside, this is just a change that makes sense. You should be able to use the magic's unique effect. Like, come on. Why does exactly. why can't you leave ash clouds or magma puddles on attacks that are imbued? Come on. All right, imbue affinities. Sand damage has been increased. Okay, I don't I don't know why that needs to be added. Plasma plasma does need this. In fact, plasma just outright needs a, either a rework or just something, man. Lightning, I don't, this, Lightning doesn't need this. Explosion, Explosion doesn't need this. Wind, Wind doesn't, Wind doesn't need this. If you add this, Wind doesn't need a damage increase. Light damage, uh, light, light, I, just whatever, light. Like, whatever. Water, imbue bleed synergy, decreased. That's fair. Sailor style, damage, decreased. That's fair. Combat, reduced the turning penalty for ships, damaged by 50%. For damage ships by 50%. Allows ships like critical durability to be able to turn to aim their cannons and not be as easily outmaneuvered by their opponent, making the fight less one-sided. But that's a really good change, especially in the Dark Sea, where you face an Atlantean ship that just one-taps you. That is so true, and you can't even turn around to attack back. There's no, there's no exactly like coming get, back from it if you get hit, hit once. once. Like they're mortars, man. Like I feel like I'm getting shot IRL, bro. I get smacked <laughs> by a mortar and then I get flung to the other side of my room. Those Atlantean ships are crazy, man. Finally, plasma conch can be D tier and not F. Finally, man, the change we needed. The change we needed to make Plasma viable. I swear to god Atlantean ships just have everything with warship enchant lol. <laughs> exactly. They be, they got some do, forbidden yeah. technique going. They got like hallowed purple. They're using the forbidden artisan type <laughs> uh, 
uh, attachments. Yeah. They got like cataclysm imbued into this stuff, man. <laughs> Potions, general, adjust the rarity of various regions and catalyst. See tester forum. I, I, I ain't going over there, bruh. Gels. Status is applied by gels. Also, chat, don't don't go to the tester forum. You, you'll get touched up. Uh, gels. <laughs> status is applied by gels. Should have 50% reduced damage synergies. That's fair. Gels are a pain in the ass. Should not be a thing. Example, Magma Mage applies bleeding gel and receives a 10% damage bonus on Magma attacks against a bleeding X. Status applied by the gel instead of the 20% damage. Whatever, just get rid of gels. They ruined PvP. Agility... Effect potency reduced by 25%. Okay, that's fair. I guess if you had a max tier agility potion, you could finally jump. What am I saying? I was going to say something stupid. Just with max agility, you could go so far, bro. Like, you could finally make it between one end of your mom and the other. That's how fat she was. And agility potions could finally, could finally sort that okay. out. Healing. Yeah, that was pretty good. Increase healing cooldown one minute to two minutes. That's fair. The amount of if you fight somebody who has like twenty billion healing potions, that especially if they were a paladin or any vitality build, they would just the fight would never end. Let's go on and on forever. It's like the the fight between whatever the the phoenix guy and the dog <laughs> guy. I forgot what their names are. Damn, bro, bro, for gore. Uh, I for gore. The, the fight that created pun? the dark sea, oh, that fight. No. Oh, and whoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one bit of lore I know. Yeah. Just, it, it wasn't even as, they're not even as epic as that. Because all the fight is, is mostly just them running and healing up. And when they fight back, they just tickle you. They shoot like <laughs> a nerf gun bullet at you. The, the annoying mosquito fighting style, but even worse. <laughs> yep. Imagine if they made interchange gel that forces people it hits stats to get reset, so people just gotta reapply stats mid fight. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> no, that is what a pain in that the would ass. be such a change. That would be a change of time. I mean the gels you could do that before, but nobody did it because they were too valuable. <laughs> I I would love like why doesn't Vtex do stupid stuff like that? Why doesn't he just come on, like make himself immune? Or give himself like a gazillion HP and just stat reset people to annoy them. <laughs> like, why does he not do that? <laughs> if I was to develop, I would do that all the time. It's just funny. Uh, I, would, I would as well, bro. I would like pull and fling people across the map. That would be just so funny. <laughs> but you like force people to change their name. Just mid fight. Just why? Just change everyone's name to Vedex so that you don't know who to target. <laughs> Exactly. So you start flinging everyone around. A normal nerf dart, the blue ones are half an inch in diameter, meaning a nerf dart is a 50 point cow bullet. Yeah, I mean, they are resembling of actual bullets, but the material, mean. Vtex seems like a workaholic. I mean, I don't know. I would love to speak with Vtex. He seems like a chill guy. He's, his humor is exactly similar to mine, and Wajid seems like a really chill guy. Oh, no. Until I get banhammered by him for saying a bad thing. I like setting lightning beam on 20 and go crazy. Not in PvP, just as a joke. They call me the cop. Nah, they should call you the FPS dropper. And the eardrum clasher, bruh. Like, lightning is second to glass in how loud it is. He gotta, like, not work by himself. Maybe updates wouldn't take months on end to come out. Uh, misconception is he, he only works by himself. He works with tech. Tech level 88. But yeah, they, they should expand the team instead of just... Uh, actually, it's tech level 80. <laughs> <laughs> no! I just like fade out of existence. I just, die on the spot. Get, I snapped, yeah. <laughs> no! Melt you down into a puddle right now. Have you heard Magmon ships? My eardrums have shattered. I need to check that out. Also, to answer your old question, smash or pass low punny. Now... What? I'm a reasonable person. I'm not a degenerate, so I'm gonna have to pass. Is that is that 
was did that just come up in chat or did, where, where did that come from? Did, I was like, scroll up where's that bit. in the balance document? Mm. Oh, it was in the the balance document. Is just asking <laughs> the real questions, the questions we all need the answers to. <laughs> Why was that not a question asked to Vtex? Why did we have dumbass like, um, what is the size of Derz's nutsack? Why didn't we just get smash or pass low bunny? Mike, do you think that Atlantean ships have warship net launches? Uh, they got it, right? They got it, right? You can waterproof spells in Nimbus, don't forget. Did he say Nimbus? I thought he said some other time. But in Nimbus, see, that would be funny. I can just waterproof magma magic. Well, that's the balance, Doc. Uh... Let's see if uh, our other friends are online, see if we want to play Fortnite. Because if not, I'm fine with just <laughs> streaming like the Q&A or something. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, Let's see like an overall of the balance cool. document, I say there's a lot of really, really good changes. Warriors easing well. Some yeah. kind of brain dead ones, ain't gonna lie. But overall, I'd say pretty satisfied with it. Yeah, I came into this thinking I would be laughing and giggling but there's actually some pretty solid changes so you know what yeah well done balance doc the only the only thing i would possibly look into is the surge rework yeah and a few other changes now we just gotta hope that vector actually influence these for real man yeah i think the imbuement making attacks get the status effect the unique effect of magic that needs to be in red and also, Vtex, add, add goddamn stamina regen gems, for God's sake. Unbelievable. Ay, ay, ay. Well, yeah, that's going to be the end of the stream, then. Uh, we'll, we can see, Wajid, if anybody wants to play Fortnite. We should play Fortnite together. <laughs> nah. I only play exclusively with my... Other friends. It just sounds so cringe saying that. <laughs> just I'll play, I'll play Fortnite with my Fortnite. other friends. Just like nerd emoji. <laughs> I have no idea oh, who yeah. the hell that Pokemon is. M Zeno. Give weep me a good night bell. kiss. Uh, oh, Weepin no. Bell. Mm. We it sounds like a Bin it's Weevil, and we all know uh, how clap the Bin Weevils are. You know, you know that one plant with the. Like, it's got like a cup shape, and like it can dissolve things that drop inside of it. Really, it's just bro? a Pokemon based on that plant. Really? <laughs> I I just looked at it now. Oh, oh you no. are you are down bad, my brother in Christ. <laughs> All right, well, yep, that's gonna be the end of the stream. Have a great rest of your day, Magma Monsters. I shall see you in the next video or stream. Have a great rest of your day.